Hi. I'm Ellie, and this is our wonderful guest, Alex. And we are live for day two yep. of Adobe Live. Um, we had a lot of fun yesterday. Um, Alex is working on a really cool illustration. We're talking a lot yeah. about career building. Yeah, yeah. Trying so. to trying to see if we can maybe finish, if not finish today, yeah. my illustration, get at least uh, the majority of it all done, and then uh, and then maybe post it later yes. on social media, which you guys can find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll share um, Alex's Instagram links so you guys can make sure you see the very very finished product. But hopefully, we'll get a lot done today. Um, would love for you guys to say hello in the chat. Let us know if you were watching yesterday or if today is your first day watching. Um, let us know where you're watching from. Um, hi, Ariana. If it's morning or if it's night, we'd love to know. It's morning here. We're in San Francisco, yeah. so it's, it's early morning. morning. It's Tired. early morning. Got two cups of the coffee. The coffee's right now. kicking in, so yeah. <laughs> mm. cool. Hi, Daria. Andrea, love your work. Voodoo, voodoo Lao. Voodoo so Lao. Following you on everything. <laughs> cool. So many, so many people right now. So, awesome. So many people. So just like yesterday, we are going to have our chat and win. Um, you'll have the chance to win some stickers from Sticker Mule, um, which is super fun. So you want to stay active in the chat, and you'll have a chance to win those. You'll get 100 free stickers that you can customize, um, which is really fun. And um, we also have a full schedule today. So we can pull that up. Earlier today, we had the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val. Um, and you can watch the replay for that if you want to participate. Um, Alex will be offering some feedback in a little bit. Um, we're live with Alex now. After this is the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And then after that is Design for Any Screen with Dohi. And I think she's designing. I don't know if she's going to continue this, um, what she was doing yesterday. But yesterday she was working on a corn dog. Yeah, um, super, after, super fun. Yeah, which is really fun for like a food truck or something. So yeah, yeah. Really quirky and fun. And she's really awesome. So definitely stay tuned for that, yeah. um, which is super great. Francesca is just like. Corn dogs. Corn yeah. dogs. Yes. Yeah. Corn dogs are so delicious. Um, hi, Sarah. Oh, we're her lunch date. You, are, you must be oh. on the East Coast. Oh. Cool. Corn dogs uh, at, at 12 p.m. And then Samantha is on the East Coast too. I it's wonder noon. what time is it like all the way in like, what's like maybe Karachi or something. I don't even know what it's like. <laughs> it's, it's so far away. Yeah, it's so far away. They're like evening time right now. So yeah. we're like morning, just waking up and everybody's like calming Isn't down. Isn't that so crazy? Yeah. Oh, Walter's from Argentina. Oh, nice. Kansas City. Forget Mason. that it's like all around the world. Super cool. Yeah, we love that. It's super awesome. Like a whole community all coming together Yeah. right here. Um, well, do you want to go ahead and talk a little bit, like recap who you are and your work? Yeah, and I'll yeah. Pull it up so so can see. I'm a Brooklyn-based illustrator and animator, and I've also done creative direction. Um, some of my clients I've worked with are like nice. Google, MTV, New York Times. Done some editorial. I kind of get like hired for like, and I do a lot of um, character design work for like advertisements and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's, but sometimes, you know, I just get hired just to, they're just like, you know, we want you to just like kind of do you, which mm -hmm. is really, really that's awesome. It's like, that's what's kind of nice. It's like they, they sometimes just like want to hire me to, and be my own art director and kind of, kind of make what I want, which is like the dream sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, uh, I kind of do like that variety of things. Yeah. Never really, I'm not really a, hard focused and narrowed on like one specific career path. I'm kind of like the, I kind of fit into whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you're whatever. versatile. Yeah, versatile. Yeah. yeah, cool. That's super awesome. I know you have really like, I love your work is so like, it's so playful and fun. <laughs> and like we were talking yesterday, like all the big eyes are just so cute. So. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely why I try to go for that. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just like what I love. I love that bubbly, like kind of just blank, dumb stare. Yeah. And they're just kind of like, just floating in space and just enjoying life. Yeah, just yeah. living life. Like yeah. this ice cream cone right here, he's yeah, having a he's great time. We're loving it too much. That <laughs> little, that little, much. that little butt. It's one of my first freelance projects, and it's just like a little butt just ch shaking there. And that's what they wanted. They're like, "Can you do a, can you do a twerking ice cream cone for like, like Baskin Robbins?" So I was yes. like, "Yeah, I can try something Absolutely. like that." Yeah, and it was for a pitch work thing. So yeah, ended that's up getting, fun. ended up getting that job. Yeah, which is pretty cool. <laughs> 
That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> lol, yeah, Kerwin. Lol, that twerking ice Everyone's cream Everyone's commenting thing. on the ice cream. Thing. There it is. You yeah. can see it better. Yeah. I think it's on, like, Giphy also. Somebody, like, sent me a message saying, really? like, they found it on Giphy, and I was like, oh, okay. So I people did. could just, like, send that to their friends as, like... Yeah, I guess. I, don't, I never used Giphy before. I don't That's pretty fun. Yeah. Or is Giphy... Wait, yeah, I don't actually remember what... Uh, is. And is it just the site, Giphy? I don't really remember. I don't really know. I don't know, really. Yeah. People can probably say in the comments and let, like, us, let know. us know. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Cool. Well, do you want to show um, what you started yesterday and talk a little bit about like what you're yeah, doing today? Yeah. Yeah. So right now, um, we're I kind of just collect, like combined these assets. So I'm gonna pull up Illustrator. So I took these like I had these like pre-made assets of just random things from previous jobs and personal work, and I just kind of took certain things and then copied and pasted them right into Photoshop as is. And then I have these, and then each one, um, for example, let's hide, let's hide these. Tim like, says the site is called Giphy and the ice cream cone is on there. Oh, okay, twice. cool. Thanks, oh, okay, Tim. cool. Fact checking Thanks. all around. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, like if you look up here, like I, I had two of them, but they, um, like right in here, I have like my layers set up and then I have like the original file of the, of the Illustrator file and then I put it in there and I essentially use it as um, an archive to magic wand and section and then going up to hiding that layer and then going up into like these specific kind of other layers within a group, like a little group folder. And that like creates light. So there's like a shadow, uh, a global illumination, and then like a, a specular direct lighting. So that's like essentially, that's essentially what I was teaching yesterday, which you can definitely just check and look at the previous video. You know, so yeah. Make yeah. sure you can watch the replay um, on Behance um, from yesterday. You can see this whole process, and um, Alex gave a lot of really good advice about career um, stuff too. So you definitely want to check that out and watch that. Yeah, yeah. Try. I'm. You know, I'm still still young, figuring it out. But yeah. I'd love to like kind of see if what I can give. So um, yeah, and I think you're also the same kind of boat. We are like different fields, but like love to hear what you say too about your field and like because I think you're gonna give like good good uh, advice too, oh, just for like, you. yeah. So, you know, <laughs> we're, yeah, we're just, uh, we're, we're just, you know, we're too figuring busy. It out. We've got our own like little individual yeah. companies just figuring it out, like yeah. working with clients. So, and I think we can really help like everybody who's yeah. like just starting out. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Um, Alex's Behance profile. Oh, I should pull yeah. it up. But uh, I think it's just, I don't even know what it is. I think it's called. I'll find, I'll find it. I'll it's share probably, it with you It's guys. just like my name. I don't remember like my actual. Yeah. If there's a user I have ID, it. but. Okay. Okay. Continue. So yeah, should I just you know just get just right jump into right it? Just right in. Right, right. Yeah. Awesome. So right now I'm gonna. It's the picture's a little dark at the moment because I haven't added any. Oh, thank you. Direct light. Ignacio shared your. Yeah, it's just your name. Oh, thanks. Where's where's it? Oh, thanks, Ignacio. Thank you. So, so a few years ago, never knew someone else did this sort of shading as well. Made my own brush for it. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I think the that textured look, like a, it's kind of like a desired look, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, yeah, it's, it was pretty niche, and they people were, um, they had like their own workarounds. Um, this one, this one girl that I knew, Simone, she has a very similar style, and she, her and I were talking about it, but she uses like. The filter um, here, it, like uses a oh, noise filter. Interesting. So I'm like, I paint mine while hers is like more like she takes like shapes and I think she like Gaussian blurs and then uses mm. filters to like create like the noise texture. So it's like there's a lot of ways. There's to a do lot it. of processes to do it, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know how you would like in After Effects. They also have like the dissolve function, and you can mm. have it like flicker in After Effects. And so if you see like those those cool like motion graphics and they have like some gradients of textures like some people That's do cool. it that way. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, super cool stuff. We're gonna probably hop right into this. Yeah. Um, we were just like, was getting advice on some colors of like uh, the characters and shirts and everything like that. So thanks guys for giving all that, giving mm -hmm. all that advice. Uh, let's see, just hop right in. Um, let's, do, let's do her face right now. I think she, that was the last thing I was working on yesterday. Perfect. Um, also for our creative challenge today, um, the challenge is to create a map for a fantasy adventure game um, and use brushes, the brush tool to add features to the map, like paths and things like that. 
Um, so we're really excited to see what you guys make. You can submit those in the challenge tab right above the chat. Um, and Alex will be looking at those in about an hour and a half. Um, so you want to make sure. Please, um, please yeah. submit. Yeah, we want to see what you guys uh, create. And it's just a really good way to practice and like, you know, gain new skills. So, and have fun. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that's really cool. Like creating a map is pretty fun. <laughs> you can be really creative with that. Like really imaginative. Wait, creating so. a map. Yeah, I think uh, one of your past, Marley Gal Galadero, Galadero, I can't remember. She went to school with me, but she oh. did some. I think she did something similar too. Whereas for the Behance for this Adobe Live, yeah, she yeah. did. Uh, she did create a map too. That's pretty I think fun. I remember. Yeah, you can check for that video on yes. on YouTube sometime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's just like we're gonna start. I think we might get into after. Oh yeah, we have to do one more character. So let's do this elf in the back, and I have to shade this, and then we can get right oh, yeah. into the like lighting part, so we can get into. Doing this direct lighting. Okay, cool. So, oh, actually, let's since I have it under. She looks so mischievous. Yeah, that's definitely I definitely what it. I want. And then this, I we didn't really have. We just kind of had like assets, and it just kind of was like, yeah. Maybe what can you like tell for a story? Maybe this like little this little thing's like speaking in the ear. It's mm -hmm. like kind of. It's a little a little weird. It's a little weird, and this is definitely not a very attractive looking person. Like that is. Those usually teeth are. If those you teeth are, are bright cre red, like literally a tomato. Yeah. Usually, it's you know. And that those it's teeth. An unusual color. The teeth are pretty gross looking. Like, yeah. look at that. Like. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. Let's. I'm gonna select because I have on essentially my eyedropper. I have it on current layer, which is good. So it's like you're not getting the actual what's on the screen color, but instead, mm -hmm. like if you were using multiply, it takes the color from the original color before it's been turned into that blending mode. So I think that's like you. It's always a good thing to have when you have it on like current layer. So like if you see, it's like not selecting this. It's like selecting the shadows. Right. Shadows. So right. that's good. Uh, so what we're gonna do back is to go back to elf and go back to shadow, and then. Tim says that's what you call a winning smile. <laughs> Ooh, that's definitely. It's one. It's one thing you could. Yeah, say. definitely one way to say it. I guess. <laughs> Kerwin says we're all beautiful on the inside. That is true. That is, yeah, that's real positive. I like Very that. Positive. You know, yeah, we're all we're all we're all good on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even if, if we're you, ugly and creepy, but we shouldn't judge if somebody's ugly or creepy. Hair. And you know, maybe she's just having a bad day, and that's why her she's so scary looking. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Just smiles and push throughs with just, the day. Just pushing through. Yeah, because life is tough. Yeah. Especially when you've got you know little people hanging was, out. It's just a too real, too realistic of a. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, I know, it's Let's definitely. Stop. <laughs> so let's just try. Let's get some shade shading. Kind of have to like constantly remember where the light source is coming from. Sometimes right. it's always always the hard thing. I think we're yeah because also the the uh, time limit. We gotta can't always nitpick on the lighting yeah. in this case, but we'll get as much as we can done, mm. and then I'll always like tweak it up Refine probably it. like later after this live stream, which you guys, like I said before, will be able to see like on my Instagram or uh, I'll probably post it like maybe on Behance or something like that. You'll find it on social media somewhere. Yeah, Alex's um, Instagram handle is Alex Kiesling. Um, I'm sure, did I say it right? Yeah, 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 okay. Alex Kiesling right okay. there. Oh, there you go. Yeah, perfect. Um, on my screen right here. So you can go ahead and follow him there and see all his really cool work, but um, also see this. Finish piece and make Thanks. sure to comment and say hey and yeah. let us know you're from Adobe or not us. Uh, let Alex yeah. know. Yeah. I won't know. <laughs> let me know if you uh, watch this live stream. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and also she's got an Instagram oh. her too. So it's weekend.creative. <laughs> Thank you. And she does a lot of branding and uh, your creative direction with photography and packaging. Thank you. That's very nice. Always it's always good to shout out people out. <laughs> Never does any harm, you know, right? It's that always is great. true. Yeah. You know, and they're We're super all talented. Always supporting each other. Always supporting. Super talented. It's kind of a. That's why I don't know. Like I said it last, yesterday. I said like there's always like people on social media. It's like it's always good to like shout out people you think are really talented because mm -hmm. they may not be getting like recognition on Instagram. They might be just starting out. But if you find them, you're like, no, like, let's give you a boost. Like yeah. you're really you're really talented. Like let's just like try to like help help you out. And I I don't know. Like some people. Some people really recognize that. And I think I said like there's like one Instagram or like 
Ellie, Ellie, uh, the twins, Elio Art, Elio Art. I can never say their. Yeah. Yeah, and they they do that quite often, which That's is really cool. Really cool, supportive. I love seeing um, artists and creatives supporting other artists and creatives. Totally, totally. Yeah. You it's very you wish cool. you were. Uh, yeah, it's like almost like as long as they're not spamming and being yes. like all the time, all the yeah. time, and so people are like on social media just like skipping past and like, oh yeah, this person right, yeah, just skip, 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 yeah, skip. Yeah. You know. But um, I think there's always like just like. There's an unused unused energy as us on social media that can be used to help other people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, it's like why not, not why not shout out some people? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I kind of wish I did it more now though too. But um, well, now you can. Yeah, now I can, yeah. It's never too <laughs> pressure, late to pressure's start. on. Like pressure's on. on. Everyone's keep, gonna follow you and be like, yeah, okay, come on, keep on that, keep someone? on that Instagram game. What <laughs> he does, he's a hypocrite. He's not shouting people out right now and be like, oh no, sorry. It's okay. No. Yeah. Um, Karen is asking, well, what inspired this particular style of art? It reminds me of mid late '90s era video games and looks really cool. Oh, so what's your inspiration? Huh, what what is mid? I wonder what that's like. Yeah. Um, so what ended up happening is, uh, I was working for this like this the salary job, and my art director at the time wanted me to like show how these like um, these orthographic turnarounds. They were all done in Illustrator and really flat and graphic, and but they were going to be turn into CGI characters. And they're like, Alex, is there like, you're our one illustrator in the company. Is there like a way to like make it look 3D looking or something? Cause so like the help the boss like kind of visualize it a little bit more. And I was like, huh, maybe. And then I kind of noticed like, oh, if I wet magic wand some of these sections and like, then I can like start shading. And then like, I don't know, you start then like over like a year, I just like developed like a process. And I was like, oh, and if I organize the files this way and do it this way. Mm -hmm. And you just like kind of start to like figure it out. So like even before I was like, I wasn't using like grainy texture. I was using just like a soft brush and all this other stuff and it looked pretty, pretty smooth, pretty, pretty, what's the word? Like kind of just, just, yeah, just that smooth yeah, look yeah, yeah. that like made, like I think a lot of people like, a lot of people hate that soft brush. And then like now it's like my only brush I use. Yeah. So I'm like not like a typical artist. Everybody's very much into the Kyle Webster, which I said before, you know, great brushes. Yeah. and then. But I'm like that one person who's like using um, just this very typical soft brush, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and it's just to do everything, which is kind of, kind of very not typical. Yeah, but it's cool. And your style developed over time, like as you were given a problem, right? You yeah. as you were solving the problem, and then, like you said, over the course of a year. So like that's a, like. It took time for you to develop this style. It wasn't an overnight thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That definitely, definitely agree. It's not like it's not technically like an overnight thing. Like when I first did it, yeah, like in the first day I was like creating something, but it was mm -hmm. really sloppy. Yeah. And but then I was like, and oh, thinking. and you just kind of start connecting things. You're like, oh wait, but I can like do this and I can mm -hmm. do that. And then like mm -hmm. over time, you're just like, oh, this is more efficient. This is more efficient. This is more efficient. And yeah, just by doing and like practicing and testing things out. So yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. yeah. And I think you even said before too, you're like, oh, if you know, like even for you, you work in business and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, if I'm like doing a contract, your first contract you ever wrote for your company was like, maybe not like the best contract, but over the yes. years you became so much better at it. And you're like, you're like always knowing what to add to, mm -hmm. to improve it. Like Everything every single time. You do, the longer you do it, you're gonna yeah. grow and yeah, I, you're gonna evolve and change over time. And like, that's the same for your style, same for like yeah. how yeah, you definitely. approach clients, all of that is always gonna be changing. So I think we're gonna start doing some, a little bit of lighting. We'll just kind of figure okay. this out. And then, so I just went and took like the same color as what I'm gonna shade and maybe made it like kind of darker and like a little bit maybe on the gray side so it's not like super saturated. And then I'm gonna go into my direct lighting up here and then I'm just gonna start, let's see, let's see how we can do it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're using the same brush and everything that you have been using? Yep, okay. just kind of like, could be like that. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I mean, I can also, let's just, I, sometimes that's why Command Z is like sometimes the best. Yep, sometimes yep. you don't know like the lighting perfectly and you're just yeah. like, like, yeah, maybe it could be like this or something like that. That one's like very just plain and I don't know, for some reason this one look kind of, let's see if I do like a harder, slightly harder brush and just to give it like that. Once it's a little harder, it gives mm -hmm. it a little bit more shine. Yeah, like hair, like 
wavy look. Yeah, kind of like that. It gives a little bit more shine, like a mm -hmm. little specularity. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm not not no pro. <laughs> hmm. I feel like this is what sometimes I spend a lot of my time on is just like trying it's to testing figure, it out. And yeah, seeing testing what it looks out. Good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm just like. It's never, it's well, never. Sometimes you have an idea in your head and you put it down and you're like, mm, this doesn't look like how it looks in my head. And it yeah. takes time to figure out how to actually like bring that to life. Yeah, definitely. I think we are like kind of made to um, just kind of like feel like we have complete thoughts when really we don't. Mm -hmm. And then we like, it's like definitely like, you're like, oh, I like have an idea to like make a video game or like write a book. And then it's like, it's going to be so easy. Like I have everything planned out in my head. And then the moment you start, you're just like, I did not take an account How of do anything. I do this? Yeah. yeah, I think it's definitely for like art pieces. To, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. You're like, mm -hmm. got an idea, and then you realize, like, oh, wait, no, like, I am missing so many details I didn't even yeah. think of. But yeah, it's it's like once you realize it, I think it, you, that's why I, when you do work with a client, you're like, gotta figure that extra time to like do something because yes. you might not. Yeah, you might not, yeah, you might take longer to figure out how to actually do it than you originally think. Yeah, and I think when you start doing it for like a while, like, mm -hmm. you, you begin to realize like what to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, let's just keep that for right now. You know, it can always improve it another yeah, time. Yeah. And then we're just gonna keep going with um, some of this more direct lighting. Okay. Um, maybe this one will we'll keep this a little bit, knock it up a little red, because that's what her color is. Um, Mason is asking, how long did it take for you to transition to only freelance? Um, so I was working like a salary job and so I was like a junior designer for this company, Marco Polo. And we, so I, but I was doing like side gigs mm -hmm. a lot of times. So like as I was, what ended up happening is as, as I told you about the style and I was working for that company, um, I would be spending like late, late nights at that, at the company studio, like till like 11 PM or 12 PM, just like on a weekday night in the, in, at my desk working. Cause I just yeah. wanted to like continue trying the style out and then um just posting on instagram and mm -hmm. then like um i got recognized by like you know either from clients who like said like they start following me like a lot of art directors who follow me on like instagram so like a lot of emails that i get that start they're like hey like uh i follow you on instagram i'm a fan of your work i'd love mm -hmm. to work with you on this like project is this available in your like schedule um and then i also had like some agents you know um one of my agents claudia she's really great and matthew they uh you know they they also follow me and they've given me jobs too and they're like it's just like uh you know it's like people who kind of follow you and get connected and they want to work with you yeah. and uh so i didn't like just hop right into it i definitely was like kind of doing these small gigs mm -hmm. and i definitely know i i said like I could, i'm like okay, sorry i can't do this I remember having to like let down like certain jobs, like it was like Facebook or Nike when I first started out and I was like so bummed and miserable. And I was like, I can't believe I had to turn down this job. Like, yeah. and it was like starting out. Because like, you had too much going on. Like, yeah, and you're like, they're job. like, yeah. And I think the very first thing I ever got hired for was um, this guy, Sebastian. He's like, hey man, I want you to be an art director for this like, this personal project I'm working mm -hmm. on. And he's like, you know, he does like really great CGI. Um, ad work and he kind of has his own um, studio. And so I was like, oh my God, like I'm like this kid fresh out of college that just started this style and this guy like wants to hire me to be an art director. And I was like so miserable, I had to say no to him. I was like, mm. this really sucks. Yeah. But then, you know, um, I kind of like slowly figured out how to fit things into time. Like I think a lot of the nine to five jobs that like you might get hired for for, ad, for working with, um, for doing like ad work, it's like hard to fit that stuff in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you might have to take some vacation days off if you're doing salary, but um, you can negotiate with the person and be like, I can I can do this, but like maybe I'm gonna have to like double down on the hours for the weekend or something like sure, that. Sure, yeah. And yeah, and then I think I, I hit a point, I was saving my money at my company and then I, I got hired for a job at Google for like six months, um, which ended up lasting for like a year. And then that was like, I was like, I can't like, I have to take this job. Yeah. I'm gonna have to really like, that was like the bird going out of the nest. I was like, I'm gonna have to like, you know, see if I can do this and mm -hmm. just jump out and take this chance. And you know, it's still, it's still like a learning process for me. It's not, it's, you know, I feel like I'm not like a, the pro who has everything figured out, but like, I'm still, I'm still figuring this out. Still young, Yeah. still right out of, still kind of a little fresh out of college. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. super fresh, but fresh, but, fresh enough. But figuring out like, yeah, negotiate. They're like nav trying to navigate the new like freelance yeah. world. 
Yeah. It's very different than working a salary job. Yeah, definitely. It's it's definitely like a different, it's, it's just like a different environment from what I was used to, because mm -hmm. I was just in a completely different industry. Mm -hmm. I guess that's like another thing. It's like, I was like doing some different industry work, but like, like what I was doing at uh, my old company was like not anything I would be doing now. And yeah. that's the thing with like art is, which is really cool is um, sometimes like these freelance jobs, they don't look at like resume. They just like, it's portfolio heavy. Right. And they're like, they're like, oh, like I think like, like the person's work is really amazing. And yeah, definitely having like a little bio that says your clients really definitely helps. Yes. But like, I remember when I was starting out, I still got like, really good company, like really good jobs that from like big name clients when I had like nothing on my resume. Mm -hmm. And I was like- They're just seeing your Yeah, because they were just seeing the work do. and they were like, mm -hmm. you know what, his work's really good. So yeah. like, let's hire them. Yeah. And that's why I think it's good to like, just constantly like post your work, you know, mm -hmm. put on Instagram, Behance, Twitter, all that yeah, other stuff. Absolutely. Because cause it's not like, I think that's a misconception people have when they're starting out is that they think like, Oh, I need two years working experience mm -hmm. for like even to do like a freelance job and like I mean yeah some jobs are like that but like oh there's a lot of jobs that are also like they might just like want to hire you just because you're just talented and you yeah. just, just kind of surprised and you're like wow I'm kind of surprised that like they're coming to me for this mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you don't have to have clients to create work for your portfolio you can like you oh, were doing yeah. I just, just like stuff that you like to do and that you loved and you were posting yeah. that and that was I what was just doing personal work All, everything I was yeah. doing was just personal work I was just yeah. like hmm I have an idea like what I maybe want to draw and mm -hmm. like I'd say like a majority of my stuff's like on my Instagram is probably personal work. I have like, you know, you know, a few clientele stuff, but yeah. like, you know, they're not like thinking like, th these companies were not thinking like, oh, this is personal work though. Mm -hmm. Like this is, you know what? If it was for a client, we'll take them seriously, but this is just junk then. No, like they're, they're not thinking, that and be like, wow, that's really good. Yeah, like how can we, we want to hire this person yeah. and apply them to like our company in some sort of way. And that's definitely like, kind of like what ended up happening. Um, it's really great. I was, yeah, I definitely say I was like a little blessed in that way to have that situation. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I, I think I made a little mistake right here. Let's see, it's under cast. No details. There we go. <laughs> Doop. Delete that. That was like looking kind of ugly right there. So you can delete it. That's why I said like you want to keep your layer separate. It's a little sharp right, right. now, so I'll kind of smooth this area out. But like mm -hmm. that's what I was saying like before you, if you keep your mass shadows on one layer and then you do these little fine details, then it's like easy to just edit out. And yeah, then like- without so affecting the other work that you've yeah, done. Yeah, and some people mentioned like clipping masks and we mm -hmm. kind of discussed that in like mm -hmm. the previous one, um, which is definitely a viable option if you want to do it in that type of method, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, lots yeah. of ways to accomplish the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same like it's thing. it's like kind of figuring out your own process. This process works for me. You know, it's there's no like set way to do anything. Mm -hmm. Like, like, and in all honesty, if you do things not the normal way, you stick out as a portfolio anyways. Sure. And so like, it's like yeah. I mean, you could definitely follow the rules of how to use these programs and what is expected and what you might see on Dribble, Behance, and all that stuff uh, with like ninety percent of the people. But you know, you can also just like figure out your own way and people be like, how'd you do that? Like, I don't know, how, how did you do that? I'm like, really curious. It's yeah. like really cool. Like, I, cause I can't figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's what kind of gets some people intrigued and interested and you know, and that's sometimes that's just like the, the thing. It's like, you just want them to get them intrigued and mm -hmm. interested into the thing. Ooh, that's, oh yeah, I'm on light, I'm on light layer right now. So let's go back to direct light, okay. kind of figure this out. Yeah, everyone's saying, um, like talking about like not posting their work because they overanalyze it or overthink it. Or oh, no, don't yeah. Think it's good enough. No. And and I, you just gotta post it. Yeah, you just gotta post it. And in all honesty, if you're not, and I, I totally understand that, like, um, and it is, and I will say this as advice is like, you know, you wanna, like, on your actual portfolio, you wanna, remove things that you think might be weak mm -hmm. because yeah. it's better to have less of of things but like really strong material because yes. if you have like one weak advice. thing that it can weaken the entire portfolio mm -hmm. and people be like wow this person's really professional you see like that one weak piece and they're like oh wait maybe they're just like lucky in how they draw and, but this is really just like they really don't have the skill set so it's like, if you're not really- Hold that thought for one second. Oh, okay, cool. We're gonna um, do chat and win and see who's gonna win our stickers. So hop in the chat, say hey, and we'll, we're will we gonna address this, uh, finish, let you finish your thought as mm. soon as we get back. Yeah, let's do the stickers. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, 
Okay, we are back. We are going to see who is going to win our stickers from Sticker Mule. Hey. What are the stickers? I wonder what they are. They're custom. So you oh, can yeah? create your own. Oh, so that's so it's like. You get 100 and you can, so you could like put your logo if you have one. You could put like an illustration. You oh. could put like whatever you want. Oh, I have mine in my bag. But, oh, yeah? Um, yeah, because I, I used Sticker Mule before too and I printed it um, off. This is not, this sounds like super, I'm like, <laughs> oh, is... like one of those sponsor things that you might find. You used to be like, no, I genuinely like I, this company. I, I use purple mattresses, yeah, you know, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, but blah. But you blah. actually, I've no, used no, Sticker Mule too, I, they're yeah, awesome. Yeah, I use it because I said like, to like, you know, if you like, um, want to send your work to like people like I don't know stickers kind of nice because it's like you, they might put it on their laptop and then yeah you were talking about they're that always, people will be like whose work is yeah, that yeah whose work is that and yeah, you know if you have your name idea. your name like right on the front you know yeah. people will be like oh it's like this artist Alex Kiesling and be like oh cool I want to like find them on Instagram or something like yeah, that yeah absolutely and so, it's just like kind of like how do you get people to like connect the dots and find you and all this other stuff which That's is. Super yeah. smart. Yeah, I don't know, business cards, like you can keep business cards and you can hang them on a billboard, but like sometimes I feel like I just lose business cards a lot of times. Yeah, you yeah, know? me too. It's definitely professional, but it's, me. I don't know. It's like, I feel like there's probably better ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, Christopher, congratulations. You win our stickers, so you can design whatever you want and pass them out and have fun with them, you'll get a message on Behance about how you can redeem those. So, and if you didn't win, you can go to this link right here, um, stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19, and you can get 10 stickers for a dollar. So you can test them out, hmm, which is super nice. fun. Yeah. Super nice. I know, I should actually do that because you get some I more need stickers. some stickers. I want, yeah, I want to make some stickers. Yeah, I mean, if you own your own business, like you <laughs> definitely should get some. I know, I talk about it all the time. Then I'm like, I should actually make some stickers. So, cool. <laughs> um, so anyway, back to what you were talking about, just about like not posting work because you don't feel like it's good enough. Oh yeah, you're talking yeah. about portfolio, like yeah, you make your pieces um, in your portfolio. But I still think like you shouldn't be timid about like posting on like social media, your mm -hmm. artwork, because I, I know at least with Instagram, if you feel like something is like weakening your Instagram profile, you can later just like archive it yep. anyways. Yeah. And I think it's like, you know, why not get like those like 10 followers from each post that you post? Like why, like just post it and it's like, if you don't feel like it's, if it's kind of weakening it, yeah. you can just, you can always archive it. and. That, that, which is a great function, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. you know, some people have different met, like different um, thoughts about it. People say like some people say like Instagram is purely like all process work, and they like I don't want to see final work on there. Mm -hmm. I like want to see just process work. So, you know, it's like I guess it's also could just be like how you interpret it. If you want to just do purely, purely like oh like my sketch work and process work for that I'm doing for a client as long as it's appropriate, um, you know, for that you can show it so it's not under NDA or anything like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I guess kind of it kind of depends, depends on, on that how case. you want to use it. But yeah. yeah, I don't. I think too like I don't think anyone looks at their work and f thinks like, oh my goodness, this is the most perfect thing I've ever made. Like you always, yeah, we, wanna, you're always thinking you can. We improve. have such an inferior complex. Yeah. Like, like I dislike my work a lot of times, mm -hmm. and you just kind of like feel like. I, why do people like this? This is like, yeah. this is like terrible. Like, this the like, color is a lot, and like this is like, what, this shading's weird, and like what's with the composition? It's just goofy characters. It's like stupid, simple, mm -hmm. and then like. But you post but, it and people love it. So. Yeah, so that's like kind of it's like yeah. it's like we all have like that inferior complex that we think we're not that great at mm -hmm. things, and we get really like we're like oh I just like don't want to show it. Yeah. But you, you know shouldn't like let you, that hold you back. Yeah, you shouldn't let that hold you back. You should yeah. just like. And I think we get, definitely if you're like posting on social media and you, for example, don't have many followers, it's definitely kind of timid. Mm -hmm. Cause you're like, you're like, you're kind of like, oh, I made this like amazing picture. And then this is why I think I said yesterday, like not, don't invest your emotions into an art piece. Cause yeah. you might get let down. You know, it's about a learning process, not the art piece itself. And then, so it's like you post it and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to get so many likes. And then if you don't, you're going to be like really shut down and disappointed. It's like good to like, Posts and then like step away, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, or respond to comments because you know yeah. that's like. And your value, you can't find your value in likes and. Oh yeah, you can't. That. that is such an unhealthy thing to like yeah. find your value in likes like yeah. that. There's there's some Especially people who are like yeah the algorithm like yeah has, maybe it, like doesn't have anything to do with you. Yeah yeah it's like you that's like such an unhealthy like um, way to think is like you know just thinking like oh it's like. I only got this many likes, so this this must mean like 
I'm not doing that well, mm -hmm. and my art's like really shitty, and blah 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 blah. Yeah. Or like I'm getting like, yeah, and it's it can be just like the luck, the timing. Maybe there's just something about how um, it fits in a composition. For example, like uh, really like faces really centered in a Instagram, like in a in the square format on Instagram is more attractive than say doing a landscape. Even though maybe the landscape is more like actually a better like better picture yeah. or like you it's you know, objectively, design-wise, maybe just like better looking. Mm -hmm. But like people are just like, have this like a uh, subconscious attraction to faces and they kind of are like, so I guess they said, there's like some sort of like statistic with like Instagram where they said like, faces get way more likes than like any other type of picture. It's like faces yeah. and then like food or something. Yeah, people love food. Yeah, people love food. It's kind of crazy. So, you know, it's like, you have to take into like certain things into account and- Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Moral of the story is post your work and share it and don't be afraid of. Yeah, step your emotions out of yeah. it. Don't be afraid of it. Just just, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. And do the challenges too, because I think um, those kinds of things where you're like ch testing out new skills, you can make some maybe little portfolio pieces out of those things or at least just get feedback from other people on how to improve. I think that's like invaluable. Yeah. So. I think that's always good. Like always, Feedback's like always good. Like if you're like constantly working with no feedback, like you might be become blind. I think you're always like doubling the power if you just like have somebody like getting feedback from them because they have a completely different perspective on things. Yeah, and it's good. they're gonna see things you're not gonna yeah. see. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. good constructive criticism. And I remember when I was working a job, they wanted me to do pitch work and I was like, I'm not real, I'm like, I'm like so constrained to like certain thoughts. Yeah. And then the moment I had my friend um, Leon come in and like help me do this like brainstorm, he just like, him and I just like bounced off ideas. We spent like, um, I told him I'd hire him as like a freelancer for this just to like help me with creative idea thinking. So I paid him some money and then he just stayed late at me with me at work one time and then we just like, just bounced ideas just like yeah. on and off each other just like That's constantly so and like made a list of words, you know, did the whole um, spider web chart thing yeah. and like, it was like way more helpful and it was great to have that like other opinion to like hear things instead of like, instead of sitting there, you know, uh, kind of like, this is all, I, I guess this is the only ad ideas that exist in the world. So yeah. like, this, like, is, it. this yeah. is it, this is the only thing that can possibly exist because this is all I can think of. Yeah. And you'd be surprised. Yeah, That's so true. Good advice. Good advice. <laughs> so um, just as a reminder, we have about 50 minutes until um, the creative challenge for today. So today um, the challenge is to design a map. Um, and so you can watch the replay for that. Um, Voodooval did that earlier this morning. Um, the replay is on Behance if you want to see um, all of her instructions. Um, but you'll be designing a map and using the brush tool to add features to it. And so um, we really want to see what you guys make. Um, so, and cool. if you want to get, like we we're talking about, feedback from Alex right now, or not right now, in about an hour, um, you can submit those in the challenge tab that's right above the chat. And um, yeah, I, I want to see that. I want to see that feedback. I want to see. Or them. I still want to see those pictures. I want to so see like, the maps. I yeah. want to see like what kind of adventures everyone's going on. <laughs> <laughs> see, these teeth are looking like crazy right now. They're kind of getting, oof, they're so gnarly. Yeah, Gross. they're pretty fierce. They're pretty fierce, and I think that's why I was like, they're gonna, it's gonna get some look like a scary picture. I feel like, yeah. but you know what? Whatever. It's it's all cool. It's just we're we're just having a fun. We're just having fun. We're just Bob Rossing. We're, we're just kind of enjoying. Bob we're just like kind of enjoying whatever we're painting. It's not like Some we're happy little teeth here. Yeah, we're not gonna think too much about it. We're just here. yeah. This is this is not like serious, super serious clientele <laughs> right now. It's just like just enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I think you know, it can still be a like, even if it's fierce. I think that's that's <laughs> fine. There's emotion in it. You know. Yeah, definitely. Let's just, oh yeah, I think I had some, yeah, let's do this. Cool. That's Tim. Winning smile, thank you, Tim. Yeah. Happy little teeth, Sarah says. Happy little teeth? Like yeah. Bob Ross, you know? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> happy, happy little teeth. Happy yeah, little just teeth like, right here. Just wanna paint, how do you, I don't even know how to do his voice. It's I, don't, like, I don't know either, yeah, but it's just he's like, great. Just like, oh, we just gotta like, Little happy trees. Little cloud. So, I was gonna do some happy so little cool. clouds in the background before, <laughs> yeah. but I don't think we'll have time for that. But that would have been like kind of fun to do. That would have been fun. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do some sweat marks though on him, so you'll see him see me do some like weird water drips or something on him. So he'd be like a 
Happy little sweats. Happy little sweats. Yeah, whatever that, I don't know what, <laughs> what he or she's thinking of that she's sweating so happily about. It's like weird, weird anticipation about something. Yeah, or maybe it's just those elves, really hot those elves are whispering, those elves are whispering something really, something in her ear. Something. And we don't know what, yeah. Tim says she's just proud to show that she's been flossing. <laughs> she has really good, yeah, she has really good teeth right now. Yeah, very white and shiny. Yeah, I probably should knock those down a bit. <laughs> like, too too bright and shiny. So, too bright. Oh, actually, yeah, I think, uh, and I actually did this on the wrong layer, but that's okay. That's all right. Yeah, I should have done it on the shadow detail, but you know what? Let's just kind of just, because <laughs> like, even though it's gonna look, you know, teeth aren't, even though teeth are white, like when they're in the shadow, they're not gonna be white. So mm -hmm. let's just kind of knock this down and then we'll go in. We'll also have like other things like other types of lighting, like we said, like global illumination mm -hmm. and that will, that will brighten up some things around, which we'll show in a we'll show in a sec. But well, not a sec. We're, we still got a while. But Tim says we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. Yeah. So we're sticking uh, with the Bob Ross theme. No we're gonna mistakes. stick with no mistakes. Okay. No mistakes. That's man. Just like remove this Command Z on here. Oh, man, <laughs> it's gonna be so frustrating. I'm like Command Z. Command Z all yeah. the way. Yeah, I just, just press it all the all the time. <laughs> Tim. Uh, then Tim says, accidentures, like, accidentures. <laughs> oh, thanks, Tim. <laughs> Tim, love it. You want to see happy little clouds? I kind of want to put clouds. Maybe I can yeah. do that later. I don't know. May if I have time, maybe I can do something Let's like see that. How it goes. And maybe if it helps the composition, like, she's just kind of floating in the sky, like clouds around her, floating up. Oh, then be... she would look like a giant. Yeah, definitely. Like, it's like kind of like huge. Yeah, kind of playing around with, yeah. like, so it's not just a person standing in front of a blank background, mm -hmm. but like what environment? Given, is yeah, what's the environment? How is it telling a different story? Definitely. Yeah. So let's go back to direct light, and then we're gonna we're just gonna see if we can color this uh, this shirt a little bit. See if it's gonna cool. <laughs> it's a little bright, maybe. Mm. Boop. Knock it down a bit. It's all it's all figuring out. Trying yeah, to trying trial to trial and error. Trial and error. I'm not gonna get this perfect right now. This all might be have to get edited later, but we can. It's no prime. No no problem really. No. Yeah. I think uh, usually how I'd normally work is I would do my full composition in mm -hmm. Illustrator, but I think we wanted to keep this like Photoshop heavy for today. Yeah, so yeah. I did everything like. I did all my composition stuff in Photoshop, and then I brought it, uh, or I did like a little bit in Illustrator, but then I did most of my stuff right in Photoshop for today. But um, cool. I like to use cross-platform programs because it's just like they have their own strengths. Like you yeah. could you could use purely Photoshop to do this because um, they also have like the pen tool, mm -hmm. and you can just do like Shift B to get that pencil hard edge to get some like good shapes and stuff like that. Um, but I kind of I kind of like. You know, just using Illustrator because it's such a strong program for vector work and yeah, getting those is. like just like changing and editing shapes around. It's really really easy to do. Yeah. Um, Deanna says that she just jumped on. So if you're just joining us, um, I am here with Alex, and um, Alex is an illustrator from New York and working on this cool little illustration, showing his process, how he creates um, like dimensional illustrations. I guess. Like, yeah, I guess it's like, how do you say it? Dimensional? Yeah, they have shape to them. And so, um, yeah, just sharing his process, talking about career building. If you guys have any questions about that as well, um, feel free to ask. Um, and yeah. Um, it's a little, yeah. little, little weird looking shape right now, but we'll see. It's, all it's right. like, yeah, everything's not, it's not the most perfect at the moment, but it's all right. I think we'll. We'll survive. <laughs> it's really hard to like, you know, normally you would be just focusing on this and probably spend a lot more time on it. But when you're oh, yeah, talking yeah. and you're working and you yeah, have a little bit of like, time, it's really hard to like do things. You're like breaking your brain apart right now. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. what, what's this? What's that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, you know, but yeah, that's like, I guess that's what you get when you're like, Talking like that's why like no artist likes to just sit there and talk while yeah. they're like working. It's they're really like hard to work they're like talk. zoned in and then you can't even get their attention sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
That's true. Um, yeah, so L front. Let's always keep those, always keep everything organized, like I said before. So then let's do, oh yeah, actually we kind of, that's what we're talking about. Slow. So you bring the shapes from um, Illustrator in as smart objects, right? So you can yeah, like, I bring, change the shapes. Yeah, if, them I, if you need so to. I can bring them in as smart objects, and that way I can like scale it and and change it around, and it still keeps like that vector information. Mm -hmm. So it's not like once you rasterize it, then it turns everything into pixels. Yeah. And that's when yeah, scaling. If you scale it up really big, then you're gonna get those like uh, artifacts. I guess mm -hmm. that's the term. I don't really know. It's like you're gonna get those like really JPEG looking squares, and the alias is gonna be really bad. Yeah. So that's why it's good to like if you are doing it, just like, um, yeah, yeah, uh, using the shape, the using it as a smart smart object. It's really good. Um, yeah, I guess we haven't picked a. Let's pick a light color for. The skin. So let's do this. I'm gonna go and do dark light here, and then do doop. start getting this, start start shading the lights up here. Kind of okay. start getting at this a bit. Kind of gives it a little bit more form as yeah, we're gonna absolutely. as we're gonna as we're gonna work through this. Uh, doop. We can always change the color. I think we can change the color later too. Of uh, the skin. Yeah, of any mm -hmm. any of the skins. I think some of the colors maybe are a little dark right now. That might happen in post. Maybe we don't really. Maybe we don't really know quite yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do it today. Um, I think we're gonna be definitely trying to push on time to get this done, though. So yeah. at the same time, it's we'll see what we can get done. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah, it's like it's, it's, it's like so cool to see it come to life, you know. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of that's what's like kind of fun about this. And you know, I I added these like little drops, so it's gonna look really ugly right now. <laughs> but if I'll show you what I do is like I hide it, create a new layer. Let's do multiply, and then let's go back and turn it back to let's let's go back to like the shadow layer on one of these things to to grab. I'm gonna say current layer, so it's not. So we're grabbing that specific color itself. So we know that's the shadow color layer. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna, you know, I mean, we could press Command and press on it, and it'll select the actual shapes like that, or we yeah. can just individually select it like this. So if this is multiply, and we're gonna just like start shading. Actually, you know, what? I take that back. Let's turn this to screen. Actually, let's do screen, and then we're gonna wanna. This is what we're gonna actually wanna do. So let's just put it down to like some random color down here. And because how light works is that when you hit, when it goes through like a drop, it like, it has a sharp kind of specular kind of like on top, because and it's really sharp and glossy. But then as it like goes through, it refracts out and mm -hmm. it'll go out the other end and kind of shine on the bottom, like mm -hmm. kind of like this. So if you, I'll show you, yeah, I'll show you, like I'll do like all the drops and you can see like exactly what will happen. You know, maybe we can just, let's just kind of maybe do it this way. Maybe this will be quicker. Boop. <laughs> like your sound effects. Yeah, boop. Sometimes I, do, <laughs> sometimes I do sound effects just while I work. It just kind of helps me keep sane. Yeah. Doesn't sound sane. Doesn't sound sane. I definitely don't, day. yeah, I definitely don't sound sane. I've definitely made like T-Rex noises when I've drawn like some weird things. I'm like, <laughs> just like, you know, like, I don't know. You kind of feel like when it's coming alive, you just, you're in that mind and you're just making things, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, come to life. Ooh, uh, Briash is asking um, if you have any tips for someone's first day at a internship. Internship, mm -hmm. um, first first tips, or like some tips for doing it. Um, or like even just internship tips in general. Oh man. Um, it depends on the internship. I don't know what 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 are they doing it's at the internship. It's a graphic design internship. Are you like are you fortunately are you to have the fortunate? Um, I've done two internships. Mm -hmm. My the one I did at Marco Polo, they like had me doing actual design work, which is like yeah. a great. That's a good internship, and they paid me. You know, <laughs> and I could charge for overtime. So there's which I didn't realize at first because I was stupid and naive, <laughs> and I worked till like 12 a.m. doing it at home trying to like make them happy. And I'm like, Alex, and the boss is like, Alex, you could have charged for overtime. Why didn't you do that? They're like, you should do that. And I was like, oh, I'm just stupid. I don't realize why. Yeah. I didn't realize that. But then I also worked another internship back in like college, and it was, uh, it was, um, this is this is like the one I don't recommend. It's like kind of like they just 
they hired you and they, they kind of made promises that I would be working with like other artists and mm -hmm. beginning to focus on my my actual career itself. But they really, it was like kind of one of those free labor ones. And, you know, I think, I don't know like how I can give maybe advice on like the specific internship you're at right now. It's like uh, um, definitely, oh, you know what? I'll say like, uh, just, you know, if you just make a good impression, cause I feel yeah. like they're gonna, they might want to hire you. Like the one I did at, at um, my company that I did gra actual design work with, like, you know, even though the design work was still kind of grunt, I made a good impression, and they actually hired me as like one yeah. of the one of the illustrators that got to really be like creative lead on certain things, and it was super super nice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and definitely like never in any business, just never burn a bridge. Like yeah, people, yeah. some people do that. They like burn bridges, mm -hmm. and like that person's like, oh, I just don't like that person. Blah blah blah. blah. And you're all like. And you're like, I mean, you can be putting that energy into like hating that person, but like that's not benefiting anything. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, and that that person, I don't know, like they they might be another your boss or coworker at another company. If they're like, you apply to like some other company, and then they're they're also working there, and they're like, oh yeah, we have like let's look at all these applicants right now. And they're like, oh this person, yeah, mm -hmm. he was a grade below me, and yeah, he said some sh some shit that I remember, and I. Like, let's not hire him. Like, that's yeah. not gonna, that's not gonna help in any way. Like, you know, it's like, you know, just keep a positive attitude. Yeah, even though, even when the time, advice. yeah, even when time comes, becomes rough and stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I would say like, try not to like work for ones that are like free labor. That's maybe, I don't know. It's kind of hard. Internships are kind of, kind of hard. Yeah. I would, yeah. It's like, I think it also depends on the country. I think in London, it's kind of more of a big thing to work for interns, like, or to be an intern. Like, it's kind of like a more required thing. But like here, it's like, it's, ma I don't know if it's as major to be an intern. It's then an said, like, it's good to have that resume if you're especially mm -hmm. working salary job. But, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, some of the companies, you know, they, they might remember you and they might hire you. And, but some of them are just like, kind of like, Oh, free labor. Yeah, like let's get them to like do some like grunt design work. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to be negative on that because I think there's like good. There's really good. Internships there's really good too. internships. Like mm -hmm. I said, I had good you can ones. Learn I've a had... lot at them. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a good advice. Taking like absorbing from like the people around you. These people are like, they're pro in what they're doing, and they're yeah, like. Yeah. Ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Definitely. That's like, and that's what I think I made the mistake of actually at that mm -hmm. one that I was saying before. I didn't ask. That's my fault. I didn't ask like enough <laughs> questions, even like. Um, to, to my coworkers that were working there, like I, um, I know they shut me in like a little room, and they're like, oh. you, they're like, organize the um, the Excel sheet, and I was like, I thought I'd be doing like design work. They're like, no, 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 you you go and see if there's any contacts, mm -hmm. and there's doubles of them. You delete that double, and you just go through, and there's like hundreds and oh. hundreds, and go through the these emails and delete any of them that seem like they're just spam. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. I thought you guys said that I'd be doing this. Yeah. yeah. But like, but they also said like, they're like, but you should also come and like ask us that they are professions. Like you should like ask them like advice on like what they're doing. Cause they are like, the company I was working for was like still like very successful at what they were doing. And I think that's like, uh, yeah. definitely good. You want to do that. Um, get, just take the opportunity, get advice and uh, learn from them. Yeah. Even absolutely. if it's like people not in your field, like pro yes. producers, like product managers and producers, if you can understand how they work, mm -hmm. you're gonna benefit yourself. Like uh, producers do not like disorganized people. They they want you to be organized and on top mm -hmm. of your shit. And I think um, if you're like a person who's constantly asking questions about things that have already been like established, they're gonna get frustrated by it. And that's something to learn about personal experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really good. Good yeah. advice. Yeah. So right now we're gonna now we're gonna do this again and say specular screen, and this will be. I'm just gonna say specular. I, I should organize. I should organize everything, but you know. Um, earlier, people were impressed that you had named all your layers. So <laughs> during this, like now you're this, letting like, them down. <laughs> oh no, I'm letting them down. Oh no. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Like oh, you were so good before, but now. <laughs> now no. you didn't name those layers. Yeah, that's I've I've brought shame to all. <laughs> it's all right. I guess. It's, it's okay. Nobody names all their layers perfectly all the time. Yeah, yeah. If you if I mean it's definitely good to like. It's good practice. So let's see, like, yeah, we're gonna just kind of bring things down a bit and then actually let's like make this, cause the specular is really bright. So we're gonna like boost it up to be like, yeah, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. So let's just. And you were talking about yesterday how like when you're doing 
shadows, right? You're not using black when you're doing yeah, like, highlights. You're not using white. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah. So like, um, I think like whenever you're doing like any type of illustration and uh, actually not any type because it depends on your style. Like sure. you can like people definitely stylize using just black shadows and really mm -hmm. whites and stuff like that. So that's it is still subjective. But if you're yeah. thinking of it as like a design sense and like just like what you might see and good practice, like don't say like, oh, shadows will be black and then I'm gonna make it 25% opacity. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, so there's like the term like ashiness, like it's gonna make it kind of look like really dull and grayed out and it's like never, never really good. So I think what's, what I like, that's why I like to do is like I take like the col the actual base color mm -hmm. and then like kind of use that as part of the shadow so it still keeps that saturation when you multiply or like screen. Mm -hmm. Or it's, yeah, or depending on like the lighting itself, you know, like what is what is it gonna be? Cause nothing's, um, cause sometimes lighting's not just, you know, blank white light, you know, maybe it's right. got some color. So it's like things that you wanna take in consideration for. So we're just gonna keep, let's see, maybe bring this up a little bit and just kinda. Uh, Tim's also saying you could um, color dodge and color burn. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think yeah, that's why we, there's Photoshop's got those great blending modes. It's like mm. there's different methods, like linear dodge is really great for like, if you got like that sunset and you want to just like add that like glow or something yeah. like that, it's, or like you got like fireflies in a forest or something like that, you want to get that like nice glow, there's like linear dodge and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, it's really like, it's really like blending modes have their strengths, you know, it's, uh, you don't have to just stick with one or the other. And especially if you're doing like actual digital painting itself, mm -hmm. like that's what's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think like if you're doing clientele work for like, uh, and they want like, uh, they want to see like lighting keyframes or something like that. And they want to see like different variations um, and you're doing digital painting, that's when those blending modes really come in handy. So instead of like painting like an actual oil painting, like each each individual, like it changing the lighting around for each one, it's like, you can like do some quick adjustments, change the color on the blending modes, change the blending modes. And then you can like quickly adjust to create like a new scene for the client. And cause that's all that they really want too is efficiency. They don't want like, yes. sometimes they don't want the most perfect picture. They want something that's uh, quick cause you know, they need to have a good turnaround right. kind of thing. So yeah, I think actually let's make this one a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, Matthias is asking what tablet you're using and you should uh, be I said today. it's the Wacom, let's see, it's, it's in the Wacom, I don't actually know this one because this is your guys', it's like the the large one, I think. It's like pretty it's new looking. It's the large. It's the large. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody should get that. It's always, uh, if you can uh, invest the money into it, it's really, really good tablet, you know, and there's like the small ones. And if you're just starting out with like the stuff, like the bamboo is pretty good. I think it's like 50 bucks, like, and that's like still like, cause sometimes it's not even like about the, the actual software and hardware. Sometimes it's like, it's um, just good to like, pra like to, you can make some really good stuff with just like the limitations you have mm -hmm. with like cheap and free and, and, and just like stuff like that. But I will say, you know, definitely the like, Adobe has like this Photoshop. This is why it's like the industry standard is because it's so strong and you can create and you're not constrained by certain things. So mm -hmm. it's definitely, yeah. I think this is why it's like kind of like the recommended industry standard for for uh, painting and stuff like that or, or photo manipulation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're getting kind of like these weird looking drop things right now. They're kind of coming to life. Let's do, let's do this again, just shift. And then we're gonna make some shadows real quickly. Select inverse. And then I'm gonna just go back down to here to select. Some. Allison says your shadow and lighting knowledge is fire. <laughs> I'll have to review these videos. Thanks, that's, a, that's really nice, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So we're just gonna like, and I think just like adding these shadows will definitely, yeah, yeah. cast shadows like definitely kind of, kind of bring things to life a little mm -hmm. bit. Oh, it's a little sharp right now. Let's, let's just like, just kind of make it a little less sharp. And then just, this is where, you can really kind of get some nice, it's like, looks like it has form now. It's like yeah. the cast shadows kind of say it's setting on the face. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Some good dimension there. Yeah, good dimension, exactly. Cool. Yeah. It's just like nice little easy way to, yeah, I mean, doesn't, doesn't, don't they look so juicy? Like they're they good, they're, they're tasty. Ew, that's kind of gross. Tasty drops, yeah, salt, ew. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know, it's like, there's just like something so satisfying making like that jelly 
transparent. Yeah. It's like, they're just, they're just like very satisfying to do. Um, looks like we missed one of them right here. Maybe we'll just ignore that for right now. So yeah, it looks like, cool. yeah, it looks like we got some, great. yeah, I got some drops right there. Give it some dimension. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're pretty weird looking. In all honesty, they're kind of, they're like gooey jelly. You know, it doesn't have, like, if I wanted to make it like really water-like, technically this right here would not be faded. It would be mm. more sharp because when it fades, it's it's saying like the water has, um, it's, it's kind of diffusing out. So maybe there's like, it's kind of has like a, um, what's like it? Like thick? Kind yeah, of kind of, or... yeah, how would I say it? Like, it, it's got like a, uh, what, what was those like Japanese, like um, those like, those jelly sugar, like it's like al algae things that like are transparent. It kind of went viral on like Instagram. Some people, somebody's gonna yeah. be able to comment in the section. Let probably. us know. Yeah, let us know. They sometimes like, well, it's like transparent, oh, like water drop cakes or something like that. Oh, I yeah. don't know what they're called, but yeah, I know Yeah, but when, yeah, when you do them like kind yeah, of incorrectly, yeah. they get kind of foggy. And I think mm -hmm. it's like how it might like kind of refract in. It's like the light might um, kind of, because it's like, it doesn't turn completely transparent. It might like kind of diffuse out more so. So that's like kind of like what happens. It's like just diffuses out. Mm -hmm. So having like, if you want it to be really water like, I think if you make it just a little sharp. Water cakes. Water yeah, cakes thank you, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Raindrop? raindrop? Oh, maybe it's called that raindrop. That sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, maybe it's called raindrop cake, actually. Yeah, Tim, Tim Mobest. Mobest. <laughs> what are the little check marks on the. What does that mean? Uh, moderator. Moderate. Okay, mm -hmm. cool, cool. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You guys are super, yeah, super got helpful. Our backs. Yeah, I got our backs. We were like. <laughs> Just trying to figure this out. We just we're just over here like, hmm, what no. is that one thing that like yeah. I don't know? I yesterday can't think of it. yesterday was <laughs> merry-go-round and now today is water it's like drop our cake. Personal um, Google. We're just yeah, like, yeah. hey, tell me what this thing yeah, is. Yeah, I can't I can't search right now like yeah. Google. Yeah. So we're gonna just yeah <laughs> well, just trying to figure this out. Guys. Oh man, lifesavers. Yeah, you guys are like Google search engine right now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. So we're just gonna yeah, just keep working. We're just gonna keep up. Oh, let's do this a little bit. Boop. We have about um, 26 minutes until um, our creative challenge is due. Um, today, the challenge is to make a map for a fantasy adventure um, and use um, the brush tool to add um, things like dotted lines or like paths and things like that on the map so cool, cool yeah make sure you submit them we want to see what you guys create and you can get some feedback live which is kind of fun um and then feedback from other people as well in discord please do it yeah. please do it you can submit right above the chat there's a challenge tab you can submit there i want to see like all the <laughs> all the work yes we want to see what you guys make uh let's see let's i hope i'm doing this i hope i'm doing this how, like right right now Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's like why I said it's always. I feel like I'm always Command Z. I know I'm bringing Bob always. Ross. Boy, I'm bringing Bob Ross to shame right now. I'm like he's like <laughs> he's he didn't have Command Z. Yeah, he didn't he have. Just had he had to go for it. He he was. That's why he's the pro. It's like he, he is knew. The pro. That's why he's the pro. He knew exactly how to. This is r so random. But did you know that he made three paintings of each painting? Yeah, actually, I did. Isn't oh, wait, crazy? did you watch that YouTube video? Yeah. It was like, yeah. The one talking about his, the. Great um, Big Story or something like that? Oh, no, not that one. No, but I do remember the saying that they have three paintings and it was like one for like this one, like his mom or something like that. There was a lady or, like, who this like, lady. discovered him. Yeah, it was so like she, he like, would like, always make. Them. Yeah, and then, she has like, you can't buy a Bob Ross painting, yeah. apparently. It's impossible. So it's like, but she's the like, she's. She has them all. There's like the Bob Ross. <laughs> so there's like the Bob Ross. Like place that literally curates it, yeah, and like they hold it, on to it. it was called the big. I don't yeah, know I don't remember, called. but it's like in the really random kind of middle of nowhere yeah. kind of area. But then there's like, then there's the Bob Ross. Tim um, has the vi the name of the video. You guys should Google it. Where are all the Bob Ross? Oh, it was it's New so York Times. I think it was New York Times actually. Yes, somebody did a video on it. Yeah. But yeah, he made. Isn't that crazy? Like he painted three. Like how yeah, did, that's, that's that's insane. That was really. It was like a pretty cool video. I really like really that cool. one. Yeah. Oh, so what I'm doing right now is um. Why it's like really, um, why, why it's like all pink right now? If you see that, I said this before yesterday. It's a uh, if I press Q, you can use yes. Q. Q is a great key function. So if you press Q, it turns it into a mask, and then you can draw like you normally would brush, and then like you would normally paint or use brush, and then you press Q again, and it turns it all into a lasso, and it and it takes in consider not just like a sharp edge, but it says like zero to one hundred percent opacity. 
And what's really cool, which is great yeah. to experiment, and I know like the artist, I talked with this um, editorial artist, Dadu Shin. He, he, I think what we discussed is he does the same type process. And it's like, if you want to get like a wood grain texture oh, yeah. and you take that, instead of like saying like using just a blending mode on top, you can take that, you know, adjust the levels, do whatever. Then you copy it into, you press Q, copy it into the actual space or whatever. Um, and it'll turn it into like this mask. So it'll be all pink, like reddish opacity kind of thing. And then press the Q again and it turns it into a lasso. So you get this texture that actually turns into a mask itself. Mm. And then from that mask, you can then like press G and then just like, you know, the fill tool and then just like fill in that space with like black or whatever. And this is really good for not just wood texture, but say if you're doing comic and you're doing yeah. so like you have like a pencil drawing or something like that, or like a ink drawing, they're like, you don't want to magic wand the section around it. What you might want to do is actually like, instead like boost the levels, get some whites, get some blacks, but maybe it's nice to have that like texture around it and you get like good brushes or something like that yeah. or something like textures like that. Do that, like import it, like just copy it right in there. Um, copy into, press Q, copy paste, it'll be all pink. Uh, you actually do want to press Command I to invert it, but that you'll figure that out anyways. And then you press Q again, and then it turns into this like lasso look. And then you just press G, and it turns it from instead of white to black, it turns it from zero percent opacity to one hundred percent opacity. And then you don't have to use line work like a blending mode, like multiply yeah, on yeah, top yeah. of on top of an image to color, which is really annoying to do. It's not like the not the best process to to work. Oops, shit. I think that's that's why I'm saying like you wanna so if I press Q again, I think yeah, so I don't press command I. So this is what the mm -hmm. this white part's yeah, what's gonna be deleting. So then I just wanted to clean up that like a little bit right there, see if that would like Yeah, it probably helped it a little bit. Gave it a little bit shine or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> you know, and I'm just realizing, you know what, let's let's give this hair like a little bit of shadow right there. So okay. let's just do that. Boop. And then just Oh yeah, bracket key to make your brush bigger. Mm -hmm. It's all about those, you know, get those hot keys kind of flowing. Yeah, save so much time. Save so much time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you don't want to, you don't want to, if you're especially working for clients, you don't want to be sitting there like going like, let me go up here. Let's do command, yeah. let's do commands. Or like, they'll be like, let's do undo button, undo button. Yeah. And then let's do like, let's zoom in. So let's press this, this little, my, this little magnifying glass to like zoom in now and it's good to know your hotkeys. It's like you'll you'll pick up on them and then you'll like. It just like becomes second nature. Yeah, it nature. becomes second nature. You yeah. don't. It's you just like type. It it's like anymore. typing on the mm -hmm. keyboard. Then it's just like you don't think about where the letters are. You just, yeah, do, you it. just do it. Yeah, your brain kind of connects the dots and it's like, oh, this is what needs to. And then even now, like um, I just had to adapt for here for Adobe Live because yeah. I use a Windows keyboard, which just switches the command and control. So then I'm like I'm like sitting there right now, being like, oh, like. I have to remember that that's not where the command is and this is where the command is. And you just kind of adapt to things. Yeah. And you'll get, everybody gets the hang of it. Yeah. Yeah, so that kind of gave it a little bit more dimension. I think that's this guy's looking a little, little funky. Maybe we can do that like a light, like the lighting's a little weird right there, but you know what, we can, like I said, maybe these things will be done at another time. Like, like we said, we, we don't have the finish time. Yeah, to, that's okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll get to see the finished work later and yeah, I, want, be fun. I hope I can do it like pretty soon within my time. I'm gonna yeah. be I'm gonna be moving soon, oh, so yeah. I'm gonna and then That's I'm a lot of work. Yeah, I got a lot of I got a lot of stuff. I've you know got client stuff and work, but I think you know I'm gonna try to finish this, get this, and show it to you guys, and hope that we can get a good final product. It'll be a try green or greenish background to illustrate. Wonder if it'll make the reds pop. Yeah, I think, yeah, and that's why I'm like, I said like before, what's a good, um, I didn't actually show you guys this, but um, I definitely recommend it. So if you don't press command U, which is like, you'll see it, command U, oh, so let's actually go to like a layer that's, actually, I think this keyboard's different. It might be different than, because command U's technically, on uh, mine was, could not complete hue saturation, saturation. command, because, oh yeah, selected area is empty, right? So let's do this, command U, you, yeah. you don't want to like really, I think it's good, like you can do it if, for some things, but I think what's a good practice is instead of adjusting the layer and then not being able to go back later on, is instead, watch this, like you want to go up here and maybe you say like on here, there's this, um, you can get like a color in here and there's obviously like a uh, hue saturation and stuff like that or color balance. And then what's really good is like, I really like selective color. So like, 
So it's good for mass editing. So let's say like I want to change that red. Uh, maybe I want to boost the magenta down or mm -hmm. turn it maybe to yellow. Like it's a it's a good way to like do some photo editing like real real quick um, and change the colors around. Maybe the clients like. Maybe the client's like, oh, it's like a little, it's a little ugly, kind of like the, it's a little brownish, but yeah. just like the reds. I don't want like the, you don't want to saturate the whole, the whole thing. thing. Yeah. And maybe doing like a clipping mask for that specific area is just like, going to take too long or refilling in all the layers. It's like a good, it's a good way to like, kind of just like mm -hmm. play around. Like, whoa. Like globally. Yeah, globally. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of crazy sometimes. And you know, this is like, this is kind of crazy. This is. This one's gonna get like a little, maybe a little mucky right here. I always kind of avoid the grays. And there's also relative, which I think gives it a more naturalistic uh -huh. feel a little bit. Yeah. But, um, so there's absolute, absolute like changes that color around. So let's, yeah, look at that. Like you can change it like, whoa, that's getting kind of crazy. <laughs> Some purple teeth there. Maybe we'll, yeah, we'll not adjust this right this moment. This is just like, uh, we'll turn that off right now. But yeah, then you can edit that anytime you want. Mm -hmm. Doesn't actually affect the artwork itself. So good editing chip, tips, you know, you're not gonna, you're not like having to like, like, oh, they want me to like change some things. Maybe I should command S this as another different file and then like go back, but instead you just, just doing this, uh, what's it called, the uh, yeah. adjustment. Well, you layer. never know too, a client might be like, oh, I wanna see what this, they look like if it, if they're yellow, but then they're like, oh, we actually go back to the red. That's the worst. Actually and that's, go back, I don't, I don't like it that's, anymore. That's, and you've like redone it all. That actually has happened. And yeah. that's, that sucks. Like yeah. where they like want you to change and they're like, you know what, actually, can you go back? And you're like, I just overwrote like the original file. And you're just like, oh, I'm so stupid. Why did I not save as is a different file? Like save as blah, yeah, blah, blah, O2. Always or, save as. Yeah, and that's that is frustrating. You do want to do that with client. If they want revisions, don't do it over the original. Do it over. Mm -hmm. Do like another version. Don't be surprised how often they are like, oh, it's just yeah. gonna go back. You know, and you know, always always back up your files. You know, yeah. that's also happens. Like you, I get, I've had clients too where they're like, can, you know, can we get like this this picture? And I go like, yeah, I'll, yeah, let me get it. And then I realize that I've either oversaved it over the original. Or, because I did like a quick photo edit and actually pred, instead of command S or command shift S, I said command S, which is just save and saves over the original. And that has frustrated me. So I accidentally yeah. would do like, I'd be like, oh, I'm, they need like a more web friendly version. So I downsize it, I'd be like, oh, I need like this one that's like, say, like 30 inches by 30 inches. They need it only to be like five inches by five inches. So I downsize it down really small and accidentally say command S. And I just saved it as like the small version. And then my original is just gone and that yeah. happened to like oh, that's so rough. that happened to like two or three of my pieces and that was real that really sucks like so it's always good what's good is like just invest either you know you know cloud or something like that um mm -hmm. the drive or you can also just like get a you know get that get that like one terabyte hard drive and yeah. just like keep that to save save your artwork you know put everything you, you do like label it like 2019 or like october 2019 november whatever and then just like drag everything that's in there and put it right onto that and then just put it on a hard drive. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then you have, you can still keep it and you know, it's it's not gonna clutter up your computer yeah. and all that other stuff. And then, you know, um, yeah, you can you can always look through things too for, uh, for yeah, for clients if they wanna look for something, but don't, you don't wanna save over the original cause you only had one version on your computer yes. and then you're screwed. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you're like, I don't know, has that happened Like, I feel it. Has that happened to you before, or at um, least in it school? It happens to me a lot in school. School, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It happens to me a lot in school. Yeah. <sighs> oh, oh my, Which is, I'm, ugh, stress, I'm stressful just thinking about eight, it. eight in the morning, and it's like, you know, one in the morning, and you're like, okay, well. Mm, oh, I'm like getting stressed just thinking of, the, I'm getting yeah. stressed thinking about it right yeah. now. It's like, <laughs> not a, oh. Oh man, cool. We have about 15 more minutes, so make sure you submit for the creative challenges. Um, you talked a little bit about like internship tips, but do you have just freelance tips in general? I'm like curious to hear what your like freelance tips are. Um, like if someone is like thinking about going into freelance or if what are they some are tips? freelance, whatever. Yeah, I mean, um, I say, I mean, I don't want to keep saying it, but like, yeah, like don't get your hopes up for things. Like if you're cold emailing or something like that, like step aside. Like it's good to do like a bunch of them instead of like being like, I feel like I'm a perfect fit for this one client. Yes. Sending it and then just being like, 
I'm gonna get it. I know I'm gonna get it. Like, just step away. Like, if they don't reply back, then you send one follow-up email, and if they don't respond to that follow-up email, don't email them, you know, for a while. Like, just leave them. They don't wanna be spammed with things. They might, you know, they are busy. They might've missed the first one. You do a follow-up, and then maybe that's it. Like, Mm -hmm. maybe wait, like, a few more months or another time and then reapply for like yeah. uh, a job for, or like for cold calling kind of thing mm-hmm. for like promoting your work or something like that. Or actually, no, actually that's different. Promoting your work is just, you send it once and then you don't expect them to get back because they just like to keep it on record and they might hit you back up actually like sure. five months later. Like you, you send it to some art directors at like New Yorker or something like that. And then they, you know, they might not, they're not gonna respond, you know, they, they're, but they might they're gonna go, might have it on record and they might put you on like a on a list or something and uh, uh, then they might hit you up like another time. So mm-hmm. and you know it's always good to like send it every other few months. You know promoting your work to those people. And uh, I think also a good good advice for freelance is try to save your money. Try yeah. to put like money to the side. Two reasons is I know it's really hard because it's like. You know, you got student student loans and uh, health insurance is so so ridiculous in our country. I'm paying like four hundred and fifty dollars for health insurance on myself, mm-hmm. which is per month, which is ridiculous. And then there's rent that's ridiculous. And I, I yeah, it's hard <laughs> to like not live paycheck by paycheck. And I feel like if you can at all, like put money off to the side for mm-hmm. multiple reasons is one, just to have that savings is good, but two, tax season's gonna come up and then yeah. you're gonna be like, oh, I have to, you know, put 35% of my taxes into like, you know, our federal taxes and I didn't, you know, save any money. I only have about $500 in my bank account and I'm gonna be screwed. Fortunately, I think in New York, it's like if you made less than like, Fifteen thousand dollars in the year of freelance. I think you don't technically. I don't know. Somebody can correct me. I thought I heard something like that. You don't have to pay pay taxes if it's like less than a certain amount of money. But like, yeah, if you're doing this like for full time job, just like one of my friends, um, one of my friends, Sean Wang. He's a uh, worked at Google and video editing. He did. He told me that like what he does is like when he did freelance, he would just be like take fifty percent. And just pretend you didn't like just put that right mm-hmm. to the side like and you never, even never, that. you never mm-hmm. made it. Just put it off to the side mm-hmm. and just, you know, and 50% is definitely a buffer. It's like, it's beyond like what you might be paying for taxes. Yeah. But and it, you'll have extra for like if you have less work. Yeah, less for work. A and you, yeah, because definitely knows. like right now, I'm getting, right now I'm getting lots of jobs at this moment, but I go through like periods where like for like a month or two, I'm like nothing. And I'm just yeah. like, I'm like, oh my God. And that like really lets you down. You're yeah, like, you're like, am I you're ever like, gonna work again? Yeah, I you're, don't know. you're like, Am I am I set for this? Am I gonna yeah. like? Am I really actually fit for freelance? And then um, sometimes I think it's like depends on the quarterly and the budgets of the companies. Yes, yeah. And then all of a sudden they like are all like, hey, we like have this like thing that we want to hire for like a advertisement or project or something like that. And you're like, what? Well, I just got like literally just today, not today, but like um, you're like, oh, just today I just got like three three job offers yeah, for yeah. things. And you're like, just today, like I'm like, and then you get like overwhelmed with stuff. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know, that's very... That's good, yeah, thank you. 500, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Cool, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I think that's, That's like, probably the best uh, advice I can probably get for freelance. I don't know, if there's, like, something specific, definitely worth asking. Yeah, if you guys have specific questions, feel free to ask them. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to... Love to know something like more specific too, because I uh, it can be a little broad. You yeah. Know? Well, and how do you survive? How do you survive freelance? It's like, hmm. yeah. You know, it's like, what? What is? How do you survive mm-hmm. freelance? Yeah, and it can be different depending we're, on what you're doing as freelance. And... We're very, we're very malleable creatures. Like when I started working yeah. a salary, I was being paid nine dollars an hour in New York, which is way below what you can even like survive off. I feel like, but you're you adjust to things. You figure mm-hmm. out how to like work with that. Yeah. And for me, like when I was being really underpaid, I couldn't afford breakfast. And I, so I had to fill up on the free coffee to suppress yeah. my hunger. And that really sucked. Yeah. Fortunately, it didn't last that long because they were like, oh, you do great work, let's hire you. And I was like, oh, thank God, oh, thank God. Like <laughs> I'm getting a, I'm getting a salary job. I was like, oh, yeah. thank God. But um, yeah, no, that was like, oh, that was so awful. It was like coming in at like 8.30 because I want to make a good impression with them. I don't want to be like, just showing up like everybody else at like 9.20 yeah, or something like yeah. that. And then, um, you know, and I just like, 
just drinking like five cups in the morning, maybe eating uh, hard boiled eggs because they're cheap or like oatmeal, like the, like the really big one and just like oatmeal and whatever they have for like seasonings on the desk in the, the kitchen area, which might be just like, uh, like sugar packets <laughs> or like salt and pepper. Yeah. I was like, if I add salt to it, it adds that like unaminess or something. <laughs> and I'm just like, savory. yeah, I'm like, it makes it savory a little bit. And then it's good to balance the flavors out. And I'm just like, this is so miserable. Yeah. But like you but figure- you make it through. You make it through, yeah. you, your body, it's not like it's the end of the world yeah. and you'll figure it You'll figure it out and push through. It's just kind of like, it just sucks. Yeah, it, but of course. that's what I mean. Like we're, we're malleable creatures, even though yeah. it feels like you might go like, I don't know how I'm gonna survive this. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I feel like for a majority of the people, you you might find a way that will survive, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even though it's, but yeah, I think I think $9 an hour or whatever it was is ridiculously low yeah. in New York for like yeah. when rent is already like, like $1,000. It's way worse here, San Francisco. <sighs> San Francisco, yeah, they, oh, it's like so crazy expensive here. Yeah, it yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Do you have recommendations for, um, a few people are asking about websites or platforms that you could use to find freelance illustration work? Uh, I heard like uh, Working Not Working. Some people recommend yeah, that for me. Yeah. Um, I get just a lot of freelance in general from Instagram mm -hmm. because of clients. Just posting your work. Because like from what I understand, this is my logic, is that yeah. like um, clients, you know, everybody's sitting on the toilet. They're not going to be on LinkedIn on the toilet. They're or they're going to be <laughs> yeah. on Instagram scrolling through the feed. So if you want to like, and the goal is not necessarily being like professional on professional platform, but just essentially, how can I place you in my mind? Mm -hmm. And so if like if you're on that toilet scrolling through, I'm going to be on you going to post on Instagram so they can see you and stuff. And uh, I don't know like. I think, uh, yeah, I, I haven't actually tried working for not working, but I think I heard a lot of like things like that. Um, does it Behance have like something similar to that? I, I think, uh, well, Behance is a great way to like, well, like Behance just, itself for is people a, to see just your Behance, work. Well, yeah, Behance in general is and a good, and I've gotten your, job, I've gotten jobs. Sorry, from Be, sorry, sorry <laughs> talking like over talking over you. I'm so excited about this. Yeah, sorry, it, almost like we're, it almost sounded like we're stupid for or like, I sound stupid for a sec, like, is Behance like something you can be like, is that like a portfolio site? Like, no, it's, yeah, definitely it's like, I've gotten clients from Behance too, and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's it's a portfolio thing yeah. too. And if you don't have your own website, it's putting your work on Behance is something that you could send people to. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, but also just for people to see your work and to get it out there, kind of like Instagram or another yeah. social media. I think though, if like a lot of clients though, it's like good to um, follow a lot of artists on social media because what they'll do is whenever they work a job. They, sometimes they'll thank the art director mm -hmm. and they'll tag the art director's Twitter or their Instagram. And then what's always good is to screenshot and keep records of all these contacts. And then on your free time, just like create uh, an Excel sheet or something mm -hmm. that just has all the contacts, their Instagram, their websites, because they might be um, creatives or graphic designers or illustrators themselves. So they might have their own websites. Uh, their emails, if you can, you know, get it right there and then. And then also just like a box that says like how you found them. So if you type, like if you're sending like a MailChimp emails to them um, or like, you know, these like kind of like broad emails, you can like at least type and say like, I saw like this work that you directed for them. Yes. I really love what you're yeah. doing with this and I love to collaborate on this type mm -hmm. of project, you know. Um, and you know, make it more personal instead of just being like, I'm Alex Kiesling, I'm an, I'm an illustrator, blah, 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 blah. Like, and I would love to work with you sometime. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like people, yeah, they kind of like like that little personal, like you feel, you make, make the art director feel like, it's not like you're just like mass sending yeah, out. Yeah, you're not like contacting every art director there ever was. Yeah. You want to work with them specifically. Yeah, but I've yeah. also heard, you know, but if, you know, some people, they do work in more quantity than, than quality. Like they, sure. they spam like a ton out because they know that like they can spam, like, you know, they can send uh, like, you know, they got like say 500 contacts, they can like be like sending all of them because you can't like individualize every message like that. Yeah. But you know, if you've got clients that you really want to work for, you know, better to individualize those yeah, ones, absolutely. you know? Yeah. Cool. Little things, little things. I think we'll get, let's just try showing some like reflective lighting now. Okay. So like, let's get into this right now. I feel like I'm, I get so, I feel like we're gonna run out of time soon. <sighs> 
The timer is counting down. Yeah, I don't know how much more time we have left. We have well, we have about four and a half minutes until. Um, no. I know, so, I know. It goes so okay. fast, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. You forget how quick this it is. It goes really fast. So we might have a little bit of time at the end after we review creative challenges. So it just depends on. Um, I'm gonna take the original original color, current layer. So it grabs the original color of it, and then I'm gonna go back into this ambient light. Not technically, I think it's discussed before, it's um, global illumination or something. Yes. But like, uh, then you're, that's what really brings things alive sometimes, it's like this little bit of like reflective light. And you know, since it's like a little bit of a shirt right here, there's a little shirt that's a little red. Maybe we'll grab some red, and we'll see what this is gonna look like. Just like a little bit to reflect up a little bit. Mm -hmm. To make it, it kind of like makes it, blends it back into each other again, you know? Um, Oh, it just kind of kind of helps, you know. This for this nose, the shadows will, could be a little bit higher up. So let's just do, uh, you know. I feel like these are like all little tweak things that I will do in my yeah. free time because it's like, um, but like let's make this like actually a little bit more sharp like this, and then we'll go back into here. And this. you're going just based on your eye, right? Like what you've seen. Yeah, just in like real this is just like experience, like yeah, from studying like light and yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just like. like this is just like from how I understand lighting in my own mm -hmm. my own uh, like uh, experience and just like you kind of think think of things as like arrows bouncing around and think of things like a pool table maybe like how is this bouncing yeah. off this angle going into this and like how strong is this light and what is it carrying from like this green up into this neutral color you know yeah. and I think the terms like ray tracing or something it's like in CGI it's like how like these lights are like going on these mm -hmm. paths. Um, Always so. traveling in a line though. It's not gonna like. like yeah, yeah. It's not. Don't think so of it like. Don't think of it like line. as a yeah, yeah, like an actual like wave or something. It's like mm -hmm. think of it like as a mathematical like here bounce up that goes like this. And I, I think like then think of things as like things get absorbed into things. So like you know because light gets absorbed. You know. Yeah, that's true. So it's you know it's just kind of think of it like in that kind of sense of math or something in physics. It's mm -hmm. like definitely kind of helps in a way to yeah. think of it. Instead of, instead of yeah, following what you, you kind of go like, oh, things are light and then there's shadow. So that means shadow will be black and white will be white because mm -hmm. that's what that is. That's mm -hmm. what things are is light is white, shadow's black. Yeah. So then I'm gonna make it a, just a perfect gradient of mm -hmm. black to, and it's like, that's not how it works. It's like, yeah, so we're like, oh, I like the white of the eyes is white, and then like the is black, but like you're like thinking like, well, it can depend on the lighting itself and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, it, yeah. It's like it might be gray and then really dark, and it's you know it's just like all these little things that like kind of help figure things out. So yeah, let's keep uh let's keep doing some this little bit of. Oh man, let's grab this again, and I actually want to bring the shadow back up again too. One minute if you have um, something oh no. to submit for the oh, creative this, challenge. Yeah, so quick, is this this is the creative challenge? It's the yes. maps. The maps. Yeah. Submit your maps. We want to see where you guys are going on your adventures. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Yeah, I think it's looking all right. It's a little, it's a little weird. Sometimes you just like look at it and go like it's a little awkward Something's looking. Something's off. Yeah. yeah, that's like always like kind of it's like it looks a little off, and I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. but then you play around with it. And yeah, exactly. You just kind of play. That's why Command Z is always. Mm -hmm. You kind of go like, oh, you know what? That yeah, I think that's be like yeah. Let's just leave it like this, and then go back to ambient light and just. We'll leave it for right now. Yeah. Maybe it's because like the hands a little further away, it's not going to get as much direct light bouncing off into it. Mm -hmm. So if it's like. It's directly next to the shirt. You're gonna get some sharp green sure. glowing into the shirt or something like that. You know, like little things like that. It's like kind of helps. Oh, we forgot to light this person too. Let's do. Oh, don't forget him. Yeah, we gotta. gotta Poor little forgotten. Yeah, else. It's, yeah. Forget he's like just hiding it's back there. Because he's hiding. It's his yeah. own fault. Yeah. You know, and I think we can also, or actually, maybe we can get some. Um, actually, I don't know if we can do it right this minute, but let's see if we can like brighten up some of the scene in the background. Just kind of like see what maybe we'll, maybe we'll see what can be played around. I like to do like a little bit of a halo to like okay, kind of like, like illuminate. Illuminate, but maybe it's gonna kind of blend a little bit. Yeah, maybe yeah. It'll blend a little bit. All right, let's jump over to our um, creative challenges. 
Love stretch. to see it right now. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah. Just gonna see if anyone joined last minute. Okay, here's our first map. Oh, I like the texture on this. Oh, nice. Okay, cool, cool. It's just like a real map. Yeah. Watch the viruses. What was the, so the theme was, um. It was to create um, a map for a fantasy adventure. Was this also blending modes? Um, or is this a. Uh... I think it was more using the brush tool to like create these kinds of, um, like dotted line or. Oh yeah, like so creating like a custom brush or something? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm which is, totally sure yeah, that's what's super it, cool. You don't have to yeah. use like the brushes right in mm -hmm. like the program. Like that's what's so great about like Photoshop is you can just, oh, you thanks. can just create custom ones right there. Thanks Tim. What's the deadline folks as well? <laughs> that's the deadline folks. Okay, okay, cool. So yeah, I think, yeah, it looks like they really played with the brushes on here. Yeah. I think, are these like, I'm almost like, are these drawn? Like, let's, I guess I could like point. <laughs> this is like last time I was like, You're yeah, like, oh, my I, hand. I'm like, this is also not mirrored. So it's like, I have to think the opposite of what I'm doing. But it's like, yeah, I was like, are those like hand drawn and then like made into a, a the stamp? Or is it like a, almost like a photo asset or something or like another PNG that was almost made it into it? I don't know. I don't not know. Sure. Let's see what beginning here. Watch the viruses. <laughs> don't get confused. Find the portal. I'm kind of curious what that's like. What's it's like telling a story? I like that it's I not like. The story. Yeah, I think that's good to like have that like little bit of a um, story to it. That's not mm -hmm. real. It's like that's definitely a little out of the box, and I think that's really good because yeah. uh, I think people will like, you know, they might stick with something a little bit um, more orig like original to what you might expect for a map. And this is pretty cool that you you're thinking out of the box, more creative on that side. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, good good use of texture. I don't even know where you got that like texture too. The one in the background. Yeah. It's like, like a leather. Light, it's like leather or something. Leather. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. It's like an elephant skin. I like it. Oh man, it's like they made a map out of an elephant skin. <laughs> so. Oh. Ooh, nice. This is like oh, Mayan there temple. Go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sexy ninja warrior lady. <laughs> um, yeah, this is wow. It's also like. Yeah, these are all kind of like interesting stories. It's like trying to figure out like what it is that it's like saying too. So like, where are you going? Yeah. yeah. So in this case, like I'm reading it from left to right. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know the start of it, but um, yeah, it's like I'm reading it like you, it's like you could read it right to left where it's like you're this like young woman going on this adventure. You get like empowered by this dragon, turn into this dragon beast ninja lady and you reach the temple. Or I'm like, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. I wonder if the story is like the other way though too. So it's it's kind of cool that you like, yeah. What's the can story? Go either way. Yeah, I can like, go with oh, the she either way. The dragon and now she's like yeah. all peaceful and yeah. I think with you guys, if you do like um, if these brushes, you should play with um. You can do like scatter and and uh, the size and everything like that. So it's like if you're doing trees, you can do like how can they maybe just shift like five degrees around or like how can they scale a little differently, especially with the mountains and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you can get like that really nice variation too. You know, super cool. I'm wondering where they get these like, this is, is this, oh, that's Pinterest. This screenshot off Pinterest. Oh yeah. Super cool, okay. Or no, no, that's my computer. Oh, is that just your computer? Yeah, okay. that's me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's telling me to pin this. Telling me to pin it. And oh, that's also a brush too, the dotted line. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Probably. Oh, I wonder if that's like following the path. Like it's doing a path follow. Cause I think mm -hmm. I've done something similar where it's like follows a path. Yeah. Cause otherwise it would just stamp it all in the same direction. Yeah. Yeah. But that's like going along a path. Mm -hmm. It's not like smooth. Wow. Those are like also, is this from like that's the last That's from one? yesterday. That's from yesterday? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Which is really cool too. This one's got nice, this one's got some nice design to yeah, it. Yeah, I like this, these graphics. Yeah, this person, def, this person definitely has some like background and some uh, graphic design or uh, icon, iconography, I think the term is. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sorry guys. Hold on. Oh no, is Adobe, is the office internet really slow today? Oh no. Well. Um, try a different network. Try a different network? Yeah, can you guess? Yes. Do you have to guess one? Um, I don't think so. Now they can always be able to log into our. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Paco, everyone. Yeah, he's the man behind it. And Gus. Actually, there's so many people behind there's this. A there's people. a lot of people behind it. 
a lot of people to thank for this. Yeah, actually, I think um, Goss came. Goss came in like for um, what's her name? The girl from la yesterday that was right after me. He just like because I I thought I left my flash drive here, and then she he just like popped in during the live stream and oh, just kind of did just like bounce through with her. There we go. Yeah. Okay, perfect. It's fixed. Wow. Yeah. I mean. Brilliant. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Damn. Like, those are created by him. I love this. This is beautiful. I love like especially like this icon right here is like yeah. really nice. Damn. I mean, if those if those were all done and you made those, like, kudos, especially mm -hmm. on the time frame you had. And the really subtle texture in the background, I like that. Yeah, too. that's it's really like, nice. that's really nice. It's the top. Um, what's it called? The topographical, mm -hmm. where it's like split in the layers and the maps. It's like. It's kind of nice to see that. It's like a little subtle with texture too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that like that king is pretty pretty yeah. bad right there. And yeah, and I think like I think like same as before. I think these these things are are working pretty well with like uh the the waves and the trees. They like mm -hmm. you know, they're kind of they're fitting in with like the graphic style of the of the iconography and I think it's pretty strong with like fitting in together as a cohesive 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 piece. It's like sometimes you get that like with like design and illustration work where it's like like something's like um, looks a little like the part of it looks like a completely different style than another part but it's not yes. like it doesn't look purposeful like you know like the term juxtaposition where it's like very oppositely contrasting. On purpose. Which, yeah, yeah where it's yeah. like you know red and green it's like very contrasting but it becomes cohesive versus like say if I'm wearing like a black shirt with a slightly navy pants, which I was doing yesterday. <laughs> it like kind of looks a little off, and you're like, you're like, those are like different. It doesn't match. It's like, it's like a little weird and awkward looking, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know. So it's like how it's like you know you either go from like one end or the other, and I think yeah. this one's like fitting into like the, this cohesive. icon. Yeah, it's more cohesive. It's like fitting into the iconography with it, and I think like same as before. I, I think if you want to like. Elevate this even more though. It's like you maybe even like play around with instead of doing like brown background, maybe making this since it's contemporary iconography, like playing around with like uh, a colored background or something like that. You know, making it a little bit more vibrant. You yeah. know, getting it getting it to get that like little modern contemporary style and thinking like instead of treasure maps being old, maybe this is like new and and kind of like more modern style. So, but you know, super cool. I yeah. like the little typography, like topographical. Map, yeah, super nice. Yeah, looks really good. Yeah, nice. Cool. Man, those are some like, those are like crazy. What were they doing like the <laughs> other days? Like, well, yesterday, remember we were doing, um, I think these were all from yesterday. Let me see if there's any. It was, other um, ones. it was, uh, Val? Yeah, it Val, was, yeah. it was, um, like adding, basically making a creature and like adding like fur scales or things like that. So. Oh, that's funny. Mm hmm. Cool. Well, thanks, guys, for submitting. Um, there's going to be another creative challenge tomorrow morning. There's also going to be an XD challenge right after this, so you want to make sure you stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, you can learn how to use XD, um, which is another really cool program. Yeah. Um, but we have a couple more minutes if you want to jump back and. Yeah. Let's up. just like let's just try to get a little bit more drawing and definitely feel like we're not going to finish today. But like that's I said, okay. that's going to be okay. That's like totally fine because we're right. gonna we're gonna see maybe we we'll just work on this like back at home, you know and. You'll see it like like I'll post it on Instagram, you know. Yes, follow yeah. Alex, uh, Alex Kiesling. <laughs> Just promo all over the place, yeah. but uh, promo, promo, <laughs> promo. There's like there's no harm in it. Like come, on. like it's just being it's just being good, well, good communication. Yeah, it's always good. Yeah, no, I think people want to follow you and like learn from you and continue to be and that's inspired. What, so. And that's the thing. It's like she's she's also a design studio, and you know she's creative director yes. for. Weekend.creative <laughs> Instagram, and if you're really into like branding Thank and packaging you. and photography, like you know, she's good. You act and I said before you've like, Thank you. funny enough, like photographed my friend's yeah, work before. Yeah, small world. Super small it's world. So I like you. Sh yeah, I found out you're my host, and I fo found you, and then you're like, that's my friend's company <laughs> that was like being packaged. And I'm like, I live in New York. She lives in LA, and it's just like small world. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's crazy. Of, the creative yeah. world's pretty connected. Once really, you get into it. really it's connected. Small it's surprisingly smaller than you would think it is. Um, yeah, Alex's Instagram and Behance links are right there, so. Oh, thanks guys. Um, Tim is yeah, on Tim, it. Tim, yeah, you are just like on it. Thank you so much. Tim is ready. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, so hers weekend.creative and then mine's just my name, Alex Kiesling. No space. So no yeah, space. follow me. You yeah. Know, 
Always, yeah, I think it's a, I love to um, always also just check people's work too, if they follow me. Sometimes I like to like look and see what like other people are doing, you know? Yeah, and absolutely. It's always nice to find new creative people to mm -hmm. see what they're doing. Get the ideas from them, spark new, spark new ideas from them and keep them like record as inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's always good. So it's what are you doing now? I'm just gonna, well, right now I was, I was gonna do, um, this is just bothering me. I just like wanna okay. fix, just want to fix uh, details. This is there we go. There's the shadow, and I'm just like it's like a little bright right there, and I'm like yeah. I feel like. Let me see if I can just get it to look a little bit. Mm, let's get it like back down here. That's the thing. It's always adjusting. It's like mm -hmm. we'll just put it like that. We'll just it's a little bit more closer around the arm, so it's but at least it's like covering that light a little bit. You know, never never perfect, but. You know, I think that's what's nice with like this way of working. It's like you can really practice and get your lighting down, but it will never be like perfect. And that's what's the like, charm of it. It's like sure, sometimes yeah. it's like it's like a little off, you know. And it's kind of it's kind of fun to like it make, gives it a human touch sometimes. It's like mm -hmm. when it's like the lighting's like stylized, where it's like maybe this type of specularity would actually be more flat and um, more of like a shape. If you sure. ever look like water droplets online, and maybe they're more like just a solid shape that's really kind of more opaque. Opaque. Uh, got a, Okay. Like a transparent, transparent. yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but like this, but I think the stylized is just like doing these dots, you know, yeah. like these like really small streaks because it really gets to that sharp like punch. Mm -hmm. And it's like a style, it's like a stylized look, it's a you style. know? Yeah, and I don't think anyone, I mean, no one's gonna mistake this for a photograph. Yeah, nobody's gonna mistake this for a photograph. So if you, if okay you do if mistake it for a photograph, like, thank you. Like, wow. <laughs> I also don't know what you're seeing in your real life. Yeah, like, what are you seeing in real life? Are you yeah. just like, what? Just all the elves that we can't see everywhere, yeah. but. Um, yeah, so I think you're right. There, if there is like little things that are off, like that's okay because it, it's not a photograph. It's yeah, exactly. It's like it's an illustration, real. and you, mm -hmm. yeah, it, that's what's nice. It's like if you're gonna make things like photorealistic, then why not just do a photograph? So, yes, you know, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like it's you know I think that's the charm of illustration is that like it's not a photograph. Yeah. Photography is great in its own. It's a medium. totally different thing, though. Yeah, it's a totally different thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna just like get this hair. Let's get this this woman's hair. Um, Yaz is asking if you want to separate the hand from the head a little bit, the little purple hand. This like, one right here? Yeah. Like yeah, I can get that. I'll get that in a little bit. I'll, yeah. That'll be, and if not, I'll try to get that um, afterwards. Sure. I'll try to get her hair and try to get some of this. Uh, okay. Try to get some, maybe like a little reflective light on there, so to say like ambient light. and It'll be, we'll get some like green in there and then. Um, so you have, um, yeah, I know you were talking about this yesterday. So if. If everyone wants to see this whole process from start to finish, you can watch the replay of yesterday's stream. Um, but in case you didn't see that, you have different layers for each kind of light that you're. Yeah, creating. yeah, yeah. So it's not just it's like, one shadow and one um, highlight. Like you have multiple I different kinds of light. I try to. I, I want to work in like layers. Yeah. Um, in this case, because, you know, um, uh, if you start like working all on one layer, you can't separate it, and mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah. So like, and you know, different lighting has different blending modes. Yeah. So like I or you can work different blending modes for different lighting. Like you can do like everything from I and be like, oh red is gonna have darker red for shadow. Like you can mm -hmm. do that or like a, maybe a purplish color, maroon mm -hmm. color for shadow. But like sometimes it's like nice to keep that like mathematical algorithmic consistency yeah. to like kind of just use the same blending mode for all shadows and then it's just like maybe yeah you can keep a low fluctuation like what I'm doing is changing the color to keep that saturation in each color but then it's like then you don't have to like stress about like, is this correct? Like, is this not correct sometimes? Cause it's just like, sometimes the math, just the the algorithm, the formula for multiply and screen and overlay and color dodge mm -hmm. and all that other stuff is like, does it right for you? And it's yeah, so- Yeah, you don't have to worry about you it. You don't have to worry about it. I think that's, yeah, it's almost like, mm -hmm. I think that's the, that's, the, that's the great thing about this, yeah, nowadays. Yeah. You know what, let's, yeah, this, I think that like little underlights could be a little, you know, it's not looking the best, but doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. A happy little underlight. A happy, happy little underlight. Yeah. Um, Kaylee is asking, what's the best way to connect with other designers? And Tim Ooh. suggested Discord, which is really good. Behance is really good. Instagram, like you've been talking about. But do you yeah, have any other like, suggestions? I think just like literally like other designers, I think they can be a little intimidating, but some of them are just like really open just to like, yeah. just to like, getting a comment and being like, like a genuine comment, like asking how they did something. Mm -hmm. Like I think, 
people might not respond if you're just saying like, you know, like cool work. But if you ask a question being like, yes. yeah, I really like this. How did you do this? Like you're going to engage. And the moment you engage, like even once that's already like a step of connection. Mm -hmm. And I think like, you know, and sometimes like when I'm in New York and London, like sometimes people just like message me being like, hey man, I'd love to like get beer with you or like go get like, we can go to a bar or something like that or go get coffee. And I'm just like, yeah, like, like yeah, sure, it's cool. And it's like, I don't know, networking is super, super cool. Like uh, my friend Paul in London, he messaged me and uh, super cool guy, he's a painter. Um, and he, he messaged me to get like drinks and stuff like that. And then we've hung out a few times. And then when I went over, we we decided to do like paint each other cause like oh, fine, fine art painting, yeah, like yeah. Uh, oil painting. Um, <laughs> And then we found out that uh, also when I saw him, like his girlfriend was the art director at No Brow Press, which is this really awesome like uh, book publishing company. Oh, cool. And she's like, I really like your stuff. I want to like publish a book with you. So then now I'm working on a book with That's with so him. That's so cool. This you know, but you so never this, know. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like there's no like it's always good to like network and make connections. Like like you would be surprised. And I yeah. th actually told you this yesterday. Like yeah. um, on the plane coming here, yeah. I was sitting next to this guy. He was. He was uh, watching some movies and stuff like, and he was, and I was drawing, doing some clientele work on the plane, and then he was like, "Oh, like you're an illustrator." And I was like, "Yeah," and he's like, "I'm a photographer, blah 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 blah." And we were just mm -hmm. talking, and find out he's like this famous photographer, and he's like, and then he tells me he's like, "Yeah, I'm the last person to photograph Mac Miller before he died." And I was like, crazy. "Whoa, you're like the person, like that's kind of crazy." Like he's like, "I'm the last person to do that, like last person to like yeah, photograph him." So, crazy. so he's like the one where it's like this, like of Mac Miller. He's the one that did that, and he was just sitting next to me on the plane, and he mm -hmm. just like we just talked, and now we follow each other on Instagram. Yeah, I want to. I would shout him out, but I can't remember his name. That's, that's okay. like, it's like Christian. I'm sorry, yeah. sorry. I don't think he's gonna watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I told him I was like, you can watch it, man. He's like, yeah, it's cool. But yeah. uh, he's super, super awesome guy. Super nice. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you just never know where you're gonna meet people. There's but... no harm in just like yeah. talking with people. Like, I don't know, like people who like are really stuck up and be like, hmm, I don't know. You're below me. Then don't you don't want to talk with them anyways. That's yeah. like that's just like fr that's like basic kindergarten friendship right there. If that person's mm -hmm. gonna be rude, like you don't want to like hang out with them anyways. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's like always. But it's cool with the internet these days. There's so many different yeah, ways to connect with such people. A, we're in such a great time right now for this. It's like Tim. Tim's can, got your back again. Thank you. Look thank at you, Darius. It's Christian Felber. Yeah. Thank you. Oh man. Yeah. He's, Thanks, he's super, so find him on Instagram too if you want to look. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of celebrity photography. I think, I don't know if I can talk about what his client is. He did tell me what it is. Yeah, maybe, so I don't maybe want, don't. Don't, ma yeah. not mention it. There's always NDAs. You <laughs> want to respect people's NDAs. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes people break them just to tell you and be like, but you got to like, just respect them and keep it yeah, yeah, down yeah. low, you know. You know, it's just like, that's the point of an NDA is not to spread things around. Exactly. Yeah. Not good, good, good advice if you work in a client. Respect the NDA though, you yes. know, like. You, yeah, some people like are really strict. Some people are not so strict about it. And some people are like, yeah, they're like, if you, if we find out that you tell anybody, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think consequences. that's a good rule in general is be respectful of. Totally, NDAs totally. And they're your trust, client in it's general. Good trust, that's literally yeah. just what it goes yeah, down to. Yeah, your client wants to know that they can trust if you. you. Can, if you can be trusted by the client or the client knows that they can trust you, mm -hmm. then they're obviously gonna like, feel more likely to rehire you. But if yes. they feel like you, you broke their trust, mm -hmm. they're not gonna rehire you. They're like, mm -hmm. no, like, why would we work with you? You just told everybody what the project was. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that's like, always gotta respect that in mm -hmm. some sort of way, you know? Absolutely. Oh, I just realized she has like a lip down here. I totally missed this section. It's oh like, yeah. Oh, I missed it. It's all good. That's what's, yeah, sometimes you do that. You just like, in this style, you like, you realize that you just kind of missed so let's, yeah, let's maybe do something like this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what, let's, because her lip is, you might get like a little specularity. So let's do some uh, direct light, grab it back up here. That's wrong. And then let's just, it might not be correct. This is why we always like command Z. Mm -hmm. So we'll just, we'll just like step back. Always good to step back and just see like. Yeah, see it as a whole. Just gives it a little bit of that little highlight right there. So, and then let's do it for the top <laughs> lip actually too. Oop, and then direct light. And then let's do like a little, a little gentle. A gentle little highlight. Yeah, gentle, a little, a little <laughs> highlight. It always gets a little, 
It's a little funky looking. That's why Command Z, if it looks a little, always keep your lighting direction the same, even with these highlights. So if your, mm -hmm. your little highlight mark on these things are like, if it's like one, one big stroke, one small stroke, and another small stroke, it's saying that there's a light here that's small, a big light, and then another small light in the scene. And it's good to keep everything consistent yeah. within that from like a streak up, like streak up here, taking that consideration. So it's not just about like adding random, mm -hmm. random highlight streaks around and being like, oh, because that's what specular, like to make that like balloon style design. It's like, mm -hmm. like oh, it just means that you just put like the streak right on top and give it this like cool little highlight. It's like sometimes it's just about like where is it actually being placed, and that's yeah. like important to know. Is like so if there's a light right here, like. It should be on this side. It shouldn't be like all of a sudden going all the way around a piece or something. Right, you know, like, right, like right. Got a balloon or something. So it's like just good, good little practice to play. So let's try. I think so. Technically, this one's like actually coming up here, but I don't think it's gonna be. So it's always it's good to play around with. Never gonna be perfect. Mm, see, that looks a little weird. If we can't get it, you know what? Maybe we just don't get it right now. I think maybe that was a little off. If we can't get it, it's fine. Yeah. It's like we just you just keep playing around. That's why sometimes this is like why it's relaxing is it's just playing around. Uh huh. And you're just kind of building layer on upon layer. Yeah, you just layer, and you just like you just like that's what's kind of fun about this is like it just like comes to life slowly. Yeah, it's like good enough. Whatever. Yeah, I think it looks it cool. looks consistent enough to mm -hmm. like count it as is, you know. And we can always add like a little bit of. Specularity, like right in here. Oh yeah, it's good to specular. Actually, I just realized I did it on the wrong layer, anyways. But it's all right. <laughs> so let's grab the specular. Boop. <laughs> I think I do that a little too often. Now that I think about it, I'm like, boop. You know, earlier Tim said if you don't make sound effects, um, the tools don't work. So <laughs> that's that's good advice. Like they just start to malfunction. They're like, where's my boop? They're like, no, you didn't make the sound. Yeah. I want my boop. Give me my boop. <laughs> Let's see. It might be something like this. I don't know. Never. Yeah. It's always always good to just play around and figure it out. Yeah. Okay. That's how you like learn too. Is just by like seeing what works. Yeah. And then next time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think if you're using references, like you don't want to like mm -hmm. follow references like practically tracing it in every way. I think that's like a pretty high school mistake is to like. Yeah. You don't learn. As yeah, much by doing that. you should like think why it works that way, and then mm -hmm. like how can you implement that into other things. So yeah. like, so that's why I say like what I think kind of clicked with me with like say like lighting was like thinking things as like paths and like thinking oh if things bounce this way it goes up this way and you know and it bounces off this way and certain it gets absorbed so, like bigger things yeah. get absorbed into different objects and maybe it refracts differently in different um, materials and and different stuff like that. That light in the air. So that, like, just that, like, little added little yeah, sparkle. Yeah, it adds like, so much. It adds so much. So, like, let's go. So crazy. I don't remember the command on Command Shift Z if it was like for undo, but like, it looks, it looks all right like this. Let's see yeah. if it's Command Shift Z. Yeah. But just adding it like that, it just kind of there. Yeah. Turns gives it that like fun little rubbery look. Like, yeah, it does look rubbery. It looks kind of shiny. It's like this is like the fun part is like literally just adding like specularity. It's just like oh, now it's like coming to life. Yeah. Okay. You have just a couple minutes if you want to do like last little touches. Yeah, it's that one's. Ooh, cool. Whoa, that's that really rubbery. Too. That's very rubbery. Yeah, I mean we could do it that way. It's like why not? But like, or we could, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's like kind of fun to do, just play and just see like, you know, it's like that's a stylized approach. It's like you know maybe yeah. she has rubber hair. It's like you don't have to think of well, things as a little. Maybe the she has sense. rubber. Yeah, maybe. We yeah. Don't know. You just kind of think be. of it as like a style too. Mm -hmm. It's just like maybe everything's just like kind of rubbery looking. Like yeah. why not? Like hair doesn't have to be just like strands and realistic to like what you see in real life. Like yeah, yeah. that's true. Why is she red with pink hair? People don't have pink hair. No, I'm just every, yeah. I guess so you, unless you die, unless you dye your hair that's pink, true. That's and it's true. like or your skin's <laughs> not like this jet red unless you're sunburn. Like you know. Oh, it's, but can you imagine that'd be the worst sunburn of all time? Oh, I've had some nasty sunburn. I had sunburn where my nose fell off at one point. That sounds disturbing. That sounds I just, that's a little disturbing for the chat feed, but that did happen at one point. I was like, oh no, just skin. Oh man. Yeah. Not if you guys want to hear about that, 
No, they're not going. They're going to be like. Nobody what the? They're going to be like. Nobody be like, will. Yeah, everybody's going to be like, what the hell? No, man, that's <laughs> the, that's disturbing. Like, oh. Uh, Oh, all looks right. like we're, we're coming. Yeah, we're coming to the end now. That is all the time we have for today. Um, thank you so much, Alex. Yeah, it was that great was coming really here. really fun. And you guys can go follow Alex, Alex Kiesling on um, Instagram and Behance, and you can see the finished um, the finished work there. Yeah, I'll see. One of yeah, those places, I'll try to get it. I'll try places. to get it done, like, you know, pretty soon, you know, and I'll try to get it out uh, probably within a few days. Cool. Hopefully, hopefully get it done within that time. Cool. So thanks. Thank you for joining. Um, stay tuned because right after this is the XC Daily Creative Challenge and then um, an XC live stream. So stay tuned and thank you so much for watching. Yep. Bye. Thanks, guys.